and are we live yes we're live well good afternoon everybody it's a memorial day long weekend and i'm thinking i got no better way to hang out and spend my time than to do it with you i'm out over at the trailer here this is real live work going on today it's just gonna be kind of passive we're gonna take time out through the day here and there to stop and answer some questions I got a TV screen here. Matt's blowing up the chat for me so I can stay engaged with you guys and have a conversation. And then later on, we're gonna be able to take some live calls as well, okay? When things start watching paint dry, literally. Well, what <laughs> scope of work today is pretty simple. I am dealing with the, the front of my house. I'm painting, okay? We, you saw the video where I changed out all the windows. I made a video where I trimmed all these windows. Got a few more to trim on the other side. The caulking, some prep work. Um, some spackling work to do, and then of course the cut and roll. We're gonna get all that done. <sighs> People wanna know where I am in Florida. All right, well, I am in Leesburg, it's Lake County. Okay, this is awesome. Loving this, Matt. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, yeah, I know, I know. So this is amazing, we have the technology. I've got a team back in Ottawa and I'm here and we make this happen. And Michelle has joined me in the studio today, all right? So you can all say hi to Michelle. She's gonna be taking care of the camera and the chat today. That'll be really interesting. <laughs> Hello to Sweden. That's right. Frederick, thank you very much for joining our stream. Uh, you're watching the vinyl repair video. You can pause that, yes, and you can get back to it for sure. All right, this is awesome. All right, guys, um, I don't really know what to do here. I've never done this before. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump in and get some work started. I'll keep looking back here. And if you have a question and you're unable to hang out in the stream today to get to the questionnaires later, if you want to do a super chat, I'll break off the work and come and answer your question for you. Okay. Michelle is just going to scream across the room and say, yo, Jeff, you got to do a super chat. And then we'll do that. All right. Otherwise, we'll try to keep all the Q&A until it's time to do some Q&A. And we'll see if we can organize this into something that's, you know, worth watching. Uh, Lots of, uh, lots of people in the DIY community are on YouTube today, right now. And so I'm inviting you to join the stream. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, let me see here. Let me just get organized a little bit. Uh, before I can paint, you know, I've got the phone here. I'm gonna unplug that for now because some of you already have the number from a previous stream. <laughs> you can't phone in until I tell you you can. And I just need to go grab myself a hammer. All right, and I can get started here. I've got some nails that I've got to punch in. I've got a few trim pieces that I got to cut. That's really interesting how that works out. All right. Da -da 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 -da. All right. When you're doing a paint job, first thing, of course, is prep. And then my prep work today involves removing some screws, doing some patching, tacking in some nails, installing a couple pieces of trim. Ah, so. There will be a little bit of hammering going on. And that is okay. All right. Now, I'm gonna need a measuring tape and a pencil. Oh, I bet I left my pencil in the bathroom on the floor. Oh, I got another one right here. Michelle's on the ball. Hey. All right, there we go. I'm gonna need a knife for that one. That one's pretty dull. <laughs> All right. 65 is my first trim number. I'm gonna put my paint gear away for a second. Get the miter saw going. Ow. Oh. All right. It's gonna be best for the first little while here, guys. We'll just keep the, uh, the screen pretty wide so there's not so much running around while we get everything up and running. Okay, I got a lot of ground to cover while I do this. 
Okay. Oh. oh, of course. The one piece I need is actually in the bedroom. There it is. Got it. <laughs> All righty. There we go. This one's got a couple of free nails in it, eh? Okay, so. Uh, we're going to attempt to actually finish off, to finish paint today in this front room over the next few hours. Let's go double check that with a dry fit. Yeah, I am about a quarter too long. It's just not getting in that corner. I'm gonna miter that corner too. <laughs> there we go. I don't have solved that problem. Perfect. Okay. So just out of curiosity, what kind of projects are you guys working on at your houses lately? I just lost my TV. Interesting. Yeah. No, it's back on. I just don't have a signal, and I don't know why. That's really strange. One second, guys. Let's see if I can fix this. Huh. Huh. Well, that's really interesting. All right, give me two seconds, guys. I've lost my uh, my feed. I have the feed, right? I got TV power. Oh, there we are. We're back. The computer timed out. Gotcha. Okay, that'll be interesting. All right, uh, building a chicken coop. Interesting. Small back entry level. Okay. Basement gym, bathroom renovation. Uh, that is aggressive, I love it. Slow clog drains, maybe the vent is blocked. Um, possible. Or, or your, your pipes are just old and they get corroded and then they start to fill up with gunk. And so then the water can just move so fast, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> if I need a hand, let you know. Yeah, that's okay. No one else is allowed on my work site. I don't have any insurance for that. Uh, an EV charger, nice. Just stay right down at the bottom and let it run. There we go. Josh was doing landscaping. Tony just put in the second EV charger for his house. Wow, nice. And thinking about a whole home water filter, that is worth its weight in gold. That filter that I put in my farmhouse was a game changer. Honestly, like without that, I wouldn't have been able to eat, drink that well water, that's for sure. And to be honest with you, the way things are going nowadays, trusting city water is sometimes even questionable in my opinion. All right, there we go. One down. Let's see if I can get myself an inside corner here. Yeah, that'll work, eh? Yeah, you know what I need, Matt? If you can hear me, buddy, I would love to get these words up just a little bit more. Thank you very much. Nice. Okay. 
I would really love to have my nail puller, but that'll work. Okay. Um, I need to grab an outside corner and an inside corner. Let's see what we got here. There we go. There's my outside. And that was already from there. And I'll be right back, guys. I need my inside corner nail puller. Where did you go? Where did you go? I know, I know. There we go. I think I found it. There we are. Alrighty. <laughs> By the way, have I told anybody yet that I'm doing a lion diet? What do you think? Huh? I am down 15 pounds in the last couple months. Okay, that's not going to work out too well. Do it this way. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Basically, it's modified a little bit because just steak was driving me crazy, so I do just protein. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm shredding three or four pounds a week when I'm behaving. <laughs> Let me know if anybody out there is trying that. Okay, somebody's complimenting me on my jawline. Ugh. That's a little inappropriate because I'm married. <laughs> ah. Stay off the beer. Yeah, no, that's why I'm doing the lion diet. <laughs> because I'm, I'm trying to modify a little bit of my drinking, but the truth is by being on the lion diet, I'm allowed to still drink beer. And uh, that's my favorite diet in the whole world. If I can lose two or three pounds a week, then I can still have beer after work, like I intend to do after I'm done this job today with you guys. Well, that just makes life worth living, doesn't it? I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm hanging around until I have grandchildren, because my kids are taking their sweet time getting babies. So, you know, uh, I might have to live till I'm 90. <laughs> Uh, all right. There we go. You know what? Honestly, what I should be doing here is I should be doing my spackling first, so it has time to dry. But I just love when this tool. That's a nice quiet compressor, right? Eh? Wow, oh, here we go. Ah, Phil wants to know what the best way to finish an enclosed green porch. Each side has one inch or so gap from the house siding. Very hard to finish off. Yeah. Well, if you want to fill the gap, you can use um, backer rod. It's actually round pipe. It's made of foam. They sell it in the seasonal section where you would buy your um, your thresholds and your, your seals for your door come in different sizes. So you can buy a one and a half or one inch pipe backer rod and you can stick that in and then you can just fill it up with a little bit of exterior polyurethane. That'll do the job just fine. Here we go. Moving on. I gotta grab my spackling, which is still over here. Don't even know why it's still way over here. Okay. There we go. Got some weird damage here from somebody that tried to hang a curtain. And I just, it's probably not gonna show up on camera, but it's, it's really noticeable in person. There we go. Okay, nice. But a bomb. Okay. One thing about painting paneling is everywhere where they made a hole for a picture, 
the last 45 years is still a hole because you don't see holes in paneling when it's just wood. They just blend right in, right? There we go. So nobody bothers to fix them. Little white dot, little dark dot, sorry, on a piece of paneling. It's pretty invisible. But as soon as you prime it, then you find out what kind of work you got in for yourself. Trust me, the hallway was uh, just a nightmare. I think they had family photos and they were hanging up two by two pictures of the last 4,000 relatives. I don't know what was going on there, but I'm gonna go through a whole tub of spackling, nah, just in that 10 foot hall. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna just finish this wall here before I move on. I mean, generally speaking, it's nice to be able to go one tool at a time or one process at a time, but I like to move forward on the project, not backwards. Here we go. Some drips earlier and a staple. Wow. I must have left this lid half open. Half of that dry dex is already dry, not dex. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I know I prepped myself up and I have a can of kills somewhere around here. But for the life of me, I can't find out, figure out why it's not right there with everything else that I recently yeah. grabbed. Yeah, should be right here on the floor. Thanks, Mitch. All right, let me just grab us some more trims in while we're waiting. I got a super chat. Let's take a look at this. All right, nice toss. That one's almost empty. I need the brand new one that I just bought that should be in this bag, but isn't. Freaking me out. All right. Hey Jeff, what is the best way to replace a rotted top plate and bottom plate? Okay. <sighs> All right. Um, let's just go through this. It all depends if it's a structural or a non-load bearing wall. If it's the structural wall, then what you do is you build another wall um, where all your, your joists are, okay? Two feet from the one you're gonna do work on. And you build it, they put a top plate on the ceiling, bottom plate on the floor, and then you measure and you make your studs just a little bit longer than they need to be. And you hammer them all in place to carry the load. And then you can cut out whatever you have to do to cut out and replace. And you can do that same for non-load bearing walls. And it's a really good procedure. There we go. And that is uh, generally the, the whole process. Whenever you get a structural engineer involved, they're gonna just tell you, listen, if you're working on this wall, for instance, we'll build a wall right here. It'll be on a floor joist package, carrying the load of the ceiling. That's really all we do, okay? And so that is the, uh, the whole process. And you can cut out and repair just about anything by doing that. The secret is when you're gonna do work like that, make sure you bring the lumber into the room that you're going to be replacing and give it a couple of days to climatize. A lot of times when you buy lumber at the store, it comes wet because it hasn't been, it's kiln dry, but to a, uh, a lesser degree than your home is dry, okay? So climatize the wood before you do structural work or it'll shrink when it dries and things will sag and settle. All right, here. I just finished painting that door. Maybe I'll be careful. And I'm just priming this stuff here with my kills. Again, oil-based primer. Whenever you need to prime something on the fly, it doesn't matter what it is. Oil-based primer primes that, and it bonds to latex paint. So that's why it's kind of like my Frank's hot sauce, right? I put that on everything. Yeah. Let me get rid of that extra light now. Bam. That'll be just way too bright on the camera. Sorry about that. Okay. I need uh, 12 and 5 eighths. That's very specific. All right, let me find one that's already white. Good. 
Now I'm reusing the same trims that I ripped off here earlier in order to case out the windows. I just figured if I'm gonna put time and energy in fixing this place up, I'd like it to look more like a house and less like a trailer. So that's why I went through the expense. Instead of just having the plastic outside corners around there, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna throw a few hundred bucks at the windows, make them look nice. Holy cow. Almost everything in this place was installed with staples, not brad nails. Or staples and brad nails. You ever have to deal with that kind of mess? Unbelievable. All right, 12 and 5 eighths, right? <laughs> hey, chocolate's in the house. There we go. Respirator. Nah, nah. No, 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 no. I like the smell of oil paint. Ah, reminds me of the 70s. 12 and 5 eighths. You're going to see that uh, there's going to be very little safety gear going on this trip today. <laughs> Best safety gear that I own is my brain. And it takes a hell of a lot more than a little bit of kills to slow that down, I'll tell you. All right. Oh, wow. I really should have cleaned those nails out before I got started. All right. <clears throat> One of the advantages that I have over contractors on the job site is I don't have to use safety gear because I'm not working on anybody else's house. <laughs> so I get to see what I'm doing, hear what's going on, um, feel what I'm touching, right? I don't have to put on a new pair of safety glasses every 25 minutes because the lenses are all scratched up. We're full of dirt from my wet saw. Pity people that have to do that kind of stuff, but. That's the world we live in nowadays, eh? Ugh. You don't want anybody getting hurt at work. 19 and a quarter. And they don't want anybody getting anything done. It's good for business to drive the prices of everything up because it takes twice as long to build things because people have to move twice as slow. Yeah. And if you like conspiracy theories, that's a really good one. <laughs> All right. Somewhere, somewhere, there's a rich guy going, what if we could just make everybody work at half speed and make it the law? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay. Uh, evergreen fog. Oh, we're talking about the color of the kitchen cabinets, are we? <laughs> All right, that's the door. So I painted the door and my kitchen cabinets the same color, right? That was the plan. There's a lot of continuity. There's also a dining room cabinet here. We're going to paint that the same. It's going to make the dining room look more like part of the kitchen when we're done. I think it's going to be stellar. All right. Yeah, I probably need to get some pieces on that too. I'll cut some trims for this. And there we go. 12 and a half, 12 and a half. 19, 19. Okay. All right. 12 and a half. Anybody else out there constantly talking to themselves when they work? <laughs> it's actually really weird for me today because usually I wouldn't shut up. I'd just be sitting here chatting to myself, having a conversation about, you know, the next plan for my business, and mulling things over my mind, and solving the mysteries of the universe. 
today. I don't think anybody wants to hear that. <laughs> you got some good arguments when you do that. <laughs> I bet you win. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. Check this out. This one piece of trim has got what? 7, 9, 11, 12, 13, 15, 17, 18. Oh, 28 nails. 28 nails. Like, really? I think this whole place, whoever was using the Brad nail machine, was getting paid by the nail. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you right now, every time we tell you something apart, there's like at least one Brad nail for every two inches of trim. Totally not necessary. I mean, it holds the nail just fine. And everywhere they put trim, there's a stud. So it makes you wonder what the heck they were thinking. Oh, man. By the way, if you haven't picked one of these up yet, you got to get them. These pliers are amazing. They're curved on purpose, so you never dent your wood materials when you're pulling your nails out. You just fire through this stuff like a hot knife through butter. Okay, here we go. 19 and a quarter. Ooh, end is nasty. Ooh. Ooh. Try that one. Yep, that's plastic for you. What did I do with my pencil? Ah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh. Okay. Now we're down to here. Should be more of the same. But up on. Ha. So you guys are aware that we got uh, Paul from Stud Pack joining our live show on Tuesday. Everybody knows who he is. I'm taking it. There we go. Okay. Of course. Twelve and seven eighths. Yeah, and if you're not aware, we are doing live shows every week now. All right, so I encourage you to join that if you've got questions or you want to just stay up to speed with what's going on in the channel. We're using it as an opportunity to have lots of great guests on. Like recently we had uh, Roger Wakefield, he's the plumber from Texas. That was a lot of fun, we had a great chat. And down here in Florida, I realized in a quick hurry that you guys do different plumbing down here in the States than we do in Canada. So that was a, that was a good little knowledge grab there for both of us. We taught each other a few things there, it was pretty cool. So make sure you check that out. We have that live streams on the homepage. You can go and just check out the live stream. On a lot of those streams we actually are given information, we, we package it so that uh, we can release it as a shorter video later on. So Thursday nights we're releasing shorter videos and a lot of those information sessions and stuff are in that, that content there. Well, I'm going to use maybe five. Yeah. There we go. Good. 
Alrighty then. Now I need this piece down here. Put up bum. You know, one frustrating thing that I got going on, I've got this uh, mic pack here, right? It's always pulling my shorts down. And uh, I can't wear a tool belt with it because of the interference. So I'm always leaving my tools around. <laughs> uh, ah, what's the glue that I use when I'm joining outside baseboards? Yeah, you know what it is? Let me show you. It's a great question. Ah, uh, you remember back in school, if you were in school early enough, we had glue and we just glue things together. It's called uh, glue. Just wood glue, nice and simple. No gorillas, no monkeys, no fancy schmancy, not 30 bucks a tube, like five. And this will do all the trim in your whole house. So just, you know, cut yourself a break on the wallet and just get yourself a regular good old piece of glue. Nothing wrong with that. These fancy schmancy solutions to problems that don't really exist out there. You got great marketing to sell them, but. Like this one here. <laughs> I bought masking tape to put these windows together, to keep the sun out. Um, Scotch brand, 3M. They make it in uh, good old fashioned brown, five bucks. Or you can get the new latest greatest blue one for $12 a roll. Your choice. But uh, <laughs> brown works just fine unless you're in direct sunlight for extended periods of time. It's the only time you got to even consider using the blue. And that's the funny part, you know, because take a look at any, any of the other YouTube channels that are like from Home Depot or Lowe's. They're constantly promoting how to paint. And they're always using the blue tape inside the bedroom. Like, do the math on that one. Really? It's not necessary. You know it's not necessary. You sell the product that'll work just fine by itself. And instead, you're out there promoting the idea of being wasteful with your client, customer's budgets. <laughs> just dumb, dumb, dumb. Oh, there we go. Low battery. We got the uh, power. Okay, yeah, good. We almost had a meltdown with the computer there, that's fun. Suspenders are heaven. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alan, if you want a platform, are you vertically challenged like me? Um, I think they're like 30 bucks. Right, they carry 200 pounds. I've had this one for like four years and I've been more than 200 pounds the last couple of years, let me tell you. So I would say just go out and buy one, all right? Do yourself a favor. Don't try to build something that's this lightweight. It's just not necessary. Now I need to get that dry decks again, finish doing some putty holes. My goodness. All right. There we go. The reason I'm scratching that is just get rid of any of those extra wood fibers because you can't patch a bump, right? It's got to be a hole. There we go. Oh, man, oh, man. Hey. Okay. All right. Here we go. Well, I've got eight million nail holes here now. This takes forever and it's worth it. You know, if you've got uh, small little holes and you put the holes in the contour of your trim, you don't need to use spackling on that, okay? Because you can use the caulking if it's an 18 gauge nailer. All right, but if you're using a 16 gauge nailer, you've got to use spackling on all your holes. They're just too big and the caulking will shrink and then you don't have to do a second application. And you'll be going, ah, oh, nuts. I shoulda, wish I shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah, thanks honey. Let me just not lose my spot here. 
Using metal studs, what is recommended to prevent condensation on attached sheetrock? Should I use a vapor barrier? Northern Utah. Yeah, you know, I wish I took some time to study the vapor barrier rules in different states and, and geographies. Um, the best thing you can do is just call your local building office, ask them if they require a vapor barrier in that region. Okay. There's no, there, there's a lot of zones where you can do it wrong and still get away with it. Okay. Because they're moderate zones, right? And it's not as severe as if you're in a really, you know, uh, if you're in a climate that really changes a lot. Like Ottawa, we go really cold in the winter, but really hot in the summer. But generally speaking, we have the heat on more than we have the air conditioning on. So we put the vapor barrier on the inside of the house because we call that the warm side. All right. And then when it's the other way around and it's actually not a good thing to have plastic there, we don't care if there's some condensation, if there's some little bit of moisture, because the house is designed to dry itself out. So these condensation issues aren't as big of an issue as you might think. It's not so much a building science issue if your house has the ability to dry out. So in the summertime, if you're using air conditioning, then you're going to be fine either way. In the wintertime, if you're using heat, and you have winter a lot more than you have summer, then I would suggest if the building office says, yes, you need a vapor barrier, then get one installed and see if they recommend a plastic or a house wrap. Now, house wrap isn't so much a vapor barrier. That's a bad idea. Um, but find out from the building office what they recommend. They might even make uh, insulation that's got a paper face for the stud packages. I know when I go to the uh, building store, I can buy insulation for wood or for metal because they're actually different thicknesses. Because metal is a C-channel, right? So that you have this stud bay cavity plus the, the C-channel you have to fill. So it's a wider base insulation. That's one of those things. I would love to get up into some different regions. One of the reasons why I'm down here in Florida is so I can learn about the Florida construction because I want to extend my understanding so I can be more helpful to all of you guys. And so just being down here, I'm blowing my mind that things are getting done. It's always just so, how shall we say, generally speaking, so warm that everything's always drying out. Even when it gets soaking wet, it's dry within just a couple of hours. And it dries to the outside and the inside because everybody's got the air conditioning just pumping. So, like down here in Florida, building science is really simple. A little bit of insulation, a lot of better air conditioning. <laughs> That's all you need, right? Like, how's the weather in Florida? Uh, about 85, 90. And do I want to be a snowbird? Uh, no, I am a snowbird. Uh, it's official. <laughs> Where do I get my license? <laughs> uh, yeah, the wife and I, we, uh, we really enjoyed being down here for the whole winter. This is our third winter down here. And the only reason we can do that is because on our channel, we are always filming more than one video a week. Okay? And then we only generally produce one. And now we're producing the live shows and then putting those to VODs. So we're making lots of content, but we generally only, only film in one video a week. So if I can film two or three... And I can actually have vacation in a life. This way I can kind of be semi-retired. Uh, and still be available to have fun in the sun. Here we go. Okay. But I think the next time I buy a house in Florida, I'm going to buy it closer to the ocean. Just because, you know, I'm a bit of a gambler. And uh, we would like to be able to take advantage of some of those Coastal community aspects. Maybe one day even get a boat. Who knows? Uh, we lived in Ottawa for so long, you kind of get closed off and forget there's a whole world out there to enjoy. So, for my mental health, I need time to go and relax and spend time with my family. 
I spent most of my life working 80 hours a week. And for people who don't know better, that's not that hard to do. You just never come home. <laughs> or if you come home, you have an office at the home, and you're always working. All right. Here we go. Okay. I feel like I'm getting somewhere here. Now, the cool thing about this dry deck is it uh, dries white. So it goes on looking a little on the pink side. But when it turns white, you know it's ready to be sanded. And so that is why I like to use this particular product. Because I am always in a rush. As soon as I can move on to the next stage or something, I'm there. There we go. The question about the church. Well, let me tell you something. People want to know what happened to the church project. <laughs> I'm going to need another nail there. What happened to the church? The church is still there. We are actually going back. There we go. In uh, July. Really? <laughs> Sorry about that. I figured I'd wait until that was done making noise before I answered. Um, we're going back in July and it's kind of like a make it or break it moment. We are going to go film some more content at the church. And then I think we might be looking at selling that property off at that point. I mean, it sounds like a fun, sexy idea. But at the same time, a lot of the work we'd be doing there is very impractical as far as everything that you guys do every day. And so we are kind of at that point where we got to make a decision because uh, holding on to a property isn't cheap. So we're thinking, well, do we sell it? Here, Matt, can you do me a poll, will you? That would be awesome. Should we buy a fixer-upper and go through the whole renovation process and show you all the newest, latest, greatest, wonderful, traditional ways of building? Or should we renovate that church? Why don't you tell me what you think? Pardon? Yeah. We're going to do a community tab. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to read the uh, comments in just a little bit. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about that because uh, I'm kind of at a crossroads. I think when we first got that church, I was thinking that both of my sons were going to be working with me at the time, so I had built-in labor. Yeah. Please get a black eye while doing the live. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what kind of work of the church? Well, we've got a beautiful backyard property, so we're going to do some outdoor stuff for sure. I'm thinking I'm going to do a lean-to, probably a fence. Uh, i got a different kind of deck I want to do. Uh, sorry, a different kind of shed that I want to build. I want to do a nice big fire pit area. Um, that kind of stuff, right? Get a fixer. Yeah, I hear you. That's kind of our, that's kind of our thinking. Like the folks that are really excited about the church, we're really excited about the church, but... If I bought a nice little three or four bed, two bath with a 1970s tiki bar in the basement, probably be a lot more practical. <sighs> Do that in a fixture, yeah, right?
Well, you know, listen, there's no end to the content. Like what we want to do is just get uh, a different house. I already did a farmhouse. I don't need to do a second one. Uh, not yet. No, that's fine. Thanks, hon. Oh, whoop, missed a few holes. Just got to step back and take a look at this. So ideally, if I could get over the next few years, I'll get something from the 50s, something from the, that needs to be nailed on, something from the 70s and the, or 80s. There's a lot of houses that were built in North America back in those days. There we go. And honestly, they got some really interesting uh, build from scratch, eh? Yeah, no, no thanks. I'm not interested in that kind of commitment. Oh. Honestly, if you're, if you're interested in watching someone build a house from scratch, you should check out the stud pack. Paul's joined us on Tuesday to talk about his process and his career and, you know, things that he's learned in his renovation career. We're going to swap stories and secrets. <laughs> I met those guys in Vegas. They seem like uh, real, real nice people. So we're going to help support them on their YouTube journey. And uh, <laughs> help you do your stairs, eh, Alan? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Well, if you guys are fans of the channel, maybe you remember way back when I was talking about this idea, going on the road, you know, and doing Donate a Day. And man, the logistics around that has just been nuts. Trying to get approvals and insurance. Just can't seem to make that happen. You know, the last couple of years, insurance companies have just been in a zero risk personality. They don't want to do anything that sounds new or weird or creative. You know, there's been enough weird and creative over the last couple of years, eh? So they just kind of put the brakes on anything that says, oh, that sounds like a new exciting idea. Not happening. They just, it's just a hard no. Okay. I got a couple nails that are sticking out that I got to fix. And I got a nail way up there. Bloody, look at that. All right. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Now, there we go. Oh, I guess I got to finish over here too. Hey. Okay. Here we go. All right. Well, would you look at that? I'm gonna need to drill with a Phillips bit. Let's see if I got it here. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, no, uh, Mitch, I'm gonna have to ask you to go find me a Phillips bit. <laughs> Good thing she's so handy. All right. <laughs> uh, and a caulking gun, if you don't mind. Thank you. All right. Well, let's take a second here. I'm going to grab a, I'm going to do some hydration. I'll take a couple of questions here. Ah, is drywall common in mobile homes? Kind of curious. Um, yeah, actually, what we have down here is a lot of paneling, but in the bathrooms, they use drywall and what they use is a actually it's a quarter inch with a vinyl wallpaper like it's pre-attached comes from the factory wrapped in vinyl very similar to um like uh school portable housing for schools right the classrooms ah oh oh here we go i want to know about is how about DIY 911? <laughs> Go help a DIYer in person, or is something already has permits? Um, yeah, that's we're researching stuff like that, right? It's, uh, it's 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 difficult because every county seems to have their own rules, so it's not that easy. Uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, Jose, can't have anybody on the site unless you got your own commercial liability insurance, right? Baseboards, yes, of course, baseboards, but here's the deal. Um, we're gonna be putting down a vinyl floor and I don't wanna put all my trims on until after the floors installed. So what we're gonna do is set up a couple sawhorses, paint all the trim first, install the vinyl, and then we'll toss the trim in with some adhesive and a couple of nails and that'll be done. We're actually gonna be painting all the trim and the walls the same color in this build, just to help it all blend in a little better. Uh, okay, so what height would you recommend from height of ground to foundation? Um, okay, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of building we're talking about. Are we talking about trailers? Yeah, right on, loving it, okay. Uh, where can you buy new interior doors? Okay. Um, you can actually Google millwork or door places, right? Like this is perfectly legitimate. It's normal. There's lots of companies out there that sell interior doors. You can custom order. There's a few major outfits actually that'll do doors for you. Okay. And they'll, they'll have like 30 options instead of two. So don't go buy a you know, Home Depot door just because it's there and it's simple and cheap. Organize your time, get something that's unique and creative. Create that whole wow effect when you go into the house. All right, like that basement series that we did, those are custom ordered doors. Yeah, you know, you're gonna be waiting four to six weeks, but whatever, you know, you're starting a basement project. The first thing you do isn't gonna be go and put the doors in, so you got time. <laughs> ah. Yeah, this is too, it's like, <laughs> I just noticed the stream looks like more trailer work. You might end up building the highest quality mobile home. Yeah, windows and everything else. You should see what I'm doing in the master bathroom. I am renovating the bejeebers out of that thing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wreck it for you, but yeah, it is gonna have the nicest four piece master bath, I think in Lake County, let alone for mobile homes. All right. <laughs> and that's saying something, cause there's a lot of waterfront properties around here that are pretty nice, right? All right. Uh, here we go. Off topic question from Andrew. One of our members um, have a concrete patio that is cracking and sinking in some areas. Would sealing the cracks and resurfacing the top work? Actually, uh, your best option, Andrew, Google a concrete lifting company, okay? They'll drill a couple holes and they'll force spray foam down there. And what it does is it lifts it and levels it and provides structure. So it doesn't crack any further. Then you seal it. And then you can resurface if you want to, but you got to get whatever erosion is happening there that's allowing things to crack. You got to fix that first. Okay, buddy. Cheers. All right. Are we having trouble finding a Phillips bit? Yeah. Yeah, you got everything else, but all right. Well, when in doubt, just rip it out. Uh, just go take the hammer to that screw. I'm sure I'll win. Hi. All right. Oh, yeah. It's just wood. All right. <laughs> we'll do the other ones on camera in a minute. There we go. You can stop looking now. Thanks. All right. Uh, next thing here is, uh, yeah, we're going to take some caulking. And I like when I'm painting to not have shadows because I find shadows are just a little ugly. And so I'm using a 20 minute dry time caulking. It's a little expensive, but when you're painting all in the same day, it is really beneficial to have, right? Here we go. And we got an 18 gauge hole there. Yeah, look at that tube just leaking. So I can steal the dab here and there. That's a technique that I use a lot. I just put a little pressure so it's always leaking out. And I can just grab a little controlled dab so I don't have a huge mess going on. There we go. <laughs> Steve is doing an exterior model on a trailer right now too. Um, Kim, definitely foam jacking for that. 
But uh, yeah, well, you know, wait until you see the bathroom series. That'll blow your mind, Steve, because uh, whoever built that bathroom 45 years ago didn't connect the drain for the shower. Anyway, uh, another Trex question. Will an outdoor carpet ruin the Trex? That's really interesting. I don't know. I would contact Trex and ask them. You know, almost every one of these companies has got a website with an information line that you can call and get information. They usually have like most common questions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I hate Phyllis screws. <laughs> I hope you're being facetious. All right. Oh, okay, here we go. And I'm not going to fill every crack in the whole place, but I'm going to definitely try to eliminate some of the shadows from these more obvious trims, right? Okay. Wow, look at that. That's not even my work, but why not? Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to finish the caulking work. All right. And then we'll do some QA. I'll just take 10 or 15 minutes out, eat my burrito bowl for lunch. <laughs> if you don't mind me eating while we're talking, I'll try not to be too nasty about it. But. And then after lunch, I'm going to uh, trim out a couple of windows here and get them all sealed up. And then we'll be, should be ready for painting. This doesn't seem to matter how nice you try to make things. When they're built this poorly, it's really hard to make them pretty. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. are ply gem. Boy, if you want to go something better than vinyl, you better have a house worth over a million dollars. It just doesn't make any sense. Vinyl is so efficient. You can double the money you spend for a good vinyl window and get something really fantastic and it'll save you another 50 cents a year in energy cost. Um, I just, I don't buy it, right? It's like rich people don't buy the newest Mercedes every year. They don't need to impress anybody. They just buy a Toyota Corolla because it's reliable and they know they're going to get to work. When it comes to windows, don't buy the bells and whistles. It's all marketing and it's just never worth it. Once we hit 1995, we pretty much maxed out on window technology as far as Return on your investment. Okay. I actually had a guy come to my house once and he was showing me how incredible his windows were. Wow. I mean, it was just like, yeah, okay. They're fancy. They're sh I mean, you know, he had a little thing set up where he would show how much heat would come through the window, through the pane, right? And, and we could reduce the heat coming into your house so your air conditioner doesn't have to work so hard. I was like, this is great. Technology was awesome. And then he said, uh, for my farmhouse, to figure that too, like, he, I'm at the farmhouse and he's trying to sell me this, which is like not exactly energy efficiency central, right? And, <laughs> or return on investment. 
you know, central because of my location and the age of the home. And he's like, um, we can do a payment plan. And I'm like, okay, interesting. How expensive are these windows that I need a payment plan? He showed me the number. I think it was somewhere up around the $80,000 range. And I'm like, you know, this is not Taj Mahal, man. Like, what, what, what kind of energy crisis am I facing that I need to spend $80,000 on windows? And I, so I checked it out and I'm like, yeah, I maybe spend $2,000 a year on air conditioning. You know, if I'm just off the top of my head, not even trying to think about it. I'm like, you want me to break even after 40 years? <laughs> if I just threw that in my RSP, I would do better. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not buying this. This is, this is crazy. Oh my goodness. You know, I mean, it's only a problem that needs to be solved if it's really a problem. Like, holy cow. I can't spend all that kind of money to solve a problem that doesn't hardly exist. But that seems to be the flavor of the day in society, doesn't it? Let's just solve every problem. Woo. The only problem anybody really needs to solve is how they can be more efficient with their time so that they can make more money and stash more of a retirement fund away. Because I'm not much for conspiracy theories, but I'll tell you, I have lost my confidence in any government doing what's right for the people. And as long as everybody's on the take, it might be time to wise up and realize we should be thinking about ourselves just a little bit more. Just one of the reasons why I run this channel. I figured, there's no contractors in this world, and the ones there are there are charging so much money because the government's so deep in their pockets. Man, learning how to do this stuff, any, any healthy guy or, or girl for that matter can flip a house every three years and not have to pay any tax on the money that you earn. That is one hell of a good idea for how to spend your spare time. All right, no more Fortnite. Think about it. No more five hours a day on TikTok. I mean, holy cow. Let's put all of our time and energy into some DIY and earn that equity. Why the heck not? Hey, have I ever done a video where I share with you how much we spent and how much we made on that farmhouse, by the way? Off the top of anybody's head, anybody ever heard those numbers? Are you interested? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't think so either. You're interested in knowing, okay. Well, here's the breakdown on that project. I bought that place. Well, actually my wife bought that house. You know, I was a contractor at the time. She was the only one that had really good credit. Uh, so there you go, I was running my own business. Hard to get good credit for a few years when you're doing that. Anyway, she bought the house for 240, I think, eh, Mitch? Does that sound about right? 240. And that was back 10 years ago. And then we put about 120 into it. 340. 360. And we sold it for, what was it, 640 or 649 or something? I think it was 649 because I remember it sounded like a lottery. <laughs> anyway, so did we clean? We cleared about 300. That's amazing. Now, granted, that house took a lot longer and it was a much bigger bite. But that's because the scope of work was a little ridiculous. We were thinking that was going to be our forever home. We had no idea that we were going to have any kind of, you know, uh, success on YouTube that would change our career path. But 300,000 bucks. I worked on it full time for one and a half years. I think that's fair to say. But full time on camera is only about 40, 50 hours a week. Because, you know, you want to make videos about all the work. You can't be working when the camera's not on. 
and Max was my cameraman. He had a life. So we did what we could with what we had. There you go. Yeah, so I'm just saying it's perfectly feasible to gut and rebuild any house out there. Um, 30 hours a week. Uh, man, 150 weeks. That is a lot of time. 1,500 hours. 1,500 hours. Man, man. Well, you put 1,500 hours in. You do that three times over 10 years, and you'd make your million dollars easy, especially in this market. You'd have to be, um, you'd have to work really hard to lose money in this market. Now the value of the houses have gone up and the materials are back to somewhat normal. I mean, there's always inflation, right? But the return on the investment of your time is now double what it was even two years ago. Like you got a 200% raise in the last two years. Think about it. Like if you're in the trades um, and your boss is telling you, hey, we need you to work overtime, you know, and let's say he's paying you 40 bucks an hour. Tell him, uh, oh, sorry, dude, it's $200 an hour or I'm going to work on my own house because that's what I'm making at home. Like, compete with that. The only reason you should have a job is because you're building your credit, right? <laughs> once, once you've built your credit score, you can pretty much sidestep most of, the, uh, most of the economy after your first flip. And I'm not saying do it like a flipper, okay? Have some integrity. Build a quality home. But... Uh, Man, the opportunity that's out there is astounding. So that's what I'm going to do on the channel over the next few years. I'm going to flip a few more of these houses, make another clear million bucks. Why not? All right? I got time. I'm still young. I'm going to make another million, million five in the next five years, flipping homes. Like, I'm not an idiot. You can just follow along, do the same things I do, and then you can have a template for making your money. I'm like, look at this. Woo, I've got skills. I can use a caulking gun. Guys, like, what I do is not that difficult. It's just about knowing what and where and when and why. Right? That's why we have this channel, because you need to know... Not just what to do and how to do it, but why you need to do it. You gotta understand the building science behind it so that you can make proper decisions as you move forward. So much of what you do in a renovation is about what's behind the walls. And that's all building science. And that changes from one region to the next. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. I think I'm talking too much here. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what? Do some masonry. The first time I had masonry, brick and block. We built a, a stairwell. It was a, um, it was a 1903 house from a banker in the southern Ontario and uh, had a huge woodshed. Um, I think it must have been about 500 square feet. It was a story and a half tall. And we were renovating the kitchen. But at the time, it was just a hand pump well in, 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 with a sink in a little, like a, like a linen closet. You know, that was the kitchen. And everything else is just done on a big table in the room. Like, hadn't been upgraded since the day it was made. And uh, so what we did is we opened up the staircase in that kitchen. That was, so we, there was a staircase going down uh, downstairs. We closed it off to make the kitchen. Ended up being about 700 square feet. And we dug a hole in the woodshed down through the earth and came through the foundation wall. Brilliant. Put in the stairs out there. Did some block then. That was fun. Ah... Uh, yeah, good stuff. Renovating bathrooms are fun. Great return investment. You learn so many skills doing one bathroom. And if you got two, you got patience, you got time. Take your time and do a great job. Uh, changing my windows. I don't feel confident yet to open the wall and put my windows in by myself. Window videos. Do we, can we have window videos that are available? I know a couple years ago, I tried to get into the window supply business. I had to opportunity 
and I was giving a huge discount because I was getting a great contractor discount. I was trying to pass it along. It ended up being almost impossible. I was working with my father at the time, and uh, we, it was just too labor intensive for us to do that model. So then we're kind of looking for a window company that's willing to have a phone number to offer customer support. But that's one of those little business things we're working on, on the side, see if we can help bring the cost of renovations down for people. Because I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but contractors buy windows at about 50 to 60% off retail price. Yeah. Yeah, and then they charge you to install it, just so you know, okay? <laughs> Good gig if you can get it. So, here we are. Uh, but windows aren't that difficult. That's one of the reasons why I want to buy an old house, because like the church, I would not have the opportunity to do window videos. They're all brand new pretty much. They don't need to be replacing. And I'm not going to spend all that money and time replacing windows that are fine just the way they are. That would be wasteful. But if I could find an old house with wooden windows or aluminum, that would be brilliant. Because ideally, part of the house would be brick and part of it would be something else. We can tackle all those videos in the same house. That'd be, brilliant. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I ran out, right? I put in windows. I did these, but these are a little different. Uh, ah, Dre the Dream. Nice. Good stuff. Hey, take care, Chocolate. We'll see you later. If I pick a house within three hours of Michael, I get free labor. Everybody wants to jump on my job site, and it's like just not the easiest thing to get the insurance company to agree to. Uh, all right. Okay. There we go. We're getting somewhere here, guys. One tube down. Amazing how fast a tube of caulking goes when you're cleaning things up. Oh, that's it for that one. Ow. Yep, that's a sliver. Oh, well, I'll eat that out later. <laughs> yeah, I got lots of fingers. Ain't no big thing. Alex, fast, dry, fast. There we go. All righty. Okay. Here we go. All right, we got... Okay, you got a 1967 house, brick rambler, needs windows, 12. But roof replacement, two, not urgent. Okay, so if you got windows and roof to deal with, okay, do the roof first. Start at the top and work your way down with your water diversion system, all right? The windows are leaking. The, the change in what's happening inside those walls isn't going to be any more dramatic than what it is right now. All right, so there we go. Uh, okay, what's the status of the church? Scott wants to know. We still own it. Yes, we still own the church. We're just not sure if we're going to keep it any more than this year. Ah, Aphrodite, yeah, I'm living the dream. Hmm, right? I'm just like, it seemed to be a better opportunity to be able to uh, be live and have people have the opportunity to join us if we're doing it on a day when everybody's on YouTube, so. We're giving this a shot, a little learning experiment. Uh, reclaimed oak beams in the basement, 13 feet long, weigh about 200 pounds each, 10 joists, perpendicular beams. Okay, um, uh, the type of beam doesn't really matter. Thoughts on attaching them? Yeah, if you're looking to do that for structural, your, your biggest concern is getting it end to end and then structurally sound on the sides. And you wanna make sure that it can't roll over. Okay, so you gotta have lateral support whether uh, use a mending plate or a block in the ceiling. And then you want to shim back on every joist to that beam. That's the best way to do it, okay? If you don't shim back to the beam, then you're definitely going to run into issues trying to squeeze it all in there. 
Remember, when you're putting in a beam, you're adding structural load support. But you can do that one joist at a time if the beam is in relative close proximity to all the joists. But if you try to get that beam to carry the load of every joist while you're installing it, that's a lot of, that's a lot of force. And you might just blow something up. I'm speaking from personal experience there. <laughs> All right. There we go. the ladder for a little while. Good. All right. You know, that's a question I was meaning to ask you, Aphrodite. Did you get your business up and running? How's that going? I know you were kind of keen on the idea of doing your own little side gig business. Not structural, just, okay. Well, if it's not structural and it's just uh, for design. Wow. Or is it? Yeah. A hurricane clips to secure rafters to top plates commonly used just on new builds where hurricanes and tornadoes are common or is everybody using them? That's a building code issue. That's regional. Um, I use them when I'm building sheds just because it makes it easy, <laughs> right? But generally it's just about uh, in zones where those storms are common. And you know what? Uh, if you're anywhere near a zone where storms are common, consider putting them in because the patterns are changing. And you might end up with a big storm one day and be glad you threw in $20 of the hurricane clips. All right? <laughs> I should do a series where I go to subscribers' house, like Joe Mama's, for example, and help teach them finish their house. Ah, Joe Mama says that. That's cool. I get that. We're, we're really hoping that that'll, make, uh, that'll come to pass soon. <sighs> I've told people before, it's all about the logistics on that one. Like just, just to consider, I gotta have the right insurance. I've gotta have somewhere to work. I've gotta have a filming crew that's portable. Um, <laughs> that's not just, it's not as easy as just having somebody show up with an iPhone. I'll tell you that right now. And we'd probably need to have three or four cameras rolling all the time. Yeah. Okay, so it's not just it's not just showing up and getting the work done. That's for sure. This old house style, right? I was thinking the only way I could probably make it work is if I do a this old house style. Now, if you watch that show, you realize that very rarely do they actually ever use the tools. They're all kind of like pseudo hosts. Right, they have contra construction contractors on site, and then they're going in there as entertainment to work on those houses. So it's a little bit different. Katie's got a question: Would you install the floor before the cabinets in a new home, and you put them under the cabinets? Okay, um, I put cabinets on tile, hardwood, and vinyl. I don't put cabinets on laminate. Okay, and that's uh, that's all you need to know about that. <laughs> hey, cheers, Matthew. I'm glad to hear that we're helping you out, buddy. Uh, Richard wants to know, what the heck are we doing here, Jeff? Well, uh, yeah, good question. I'm just over here painting my house. 
we're down here working on the trailer, and since we're not making a painting video per se in the in the front room here, I figured I might as well enjoy you. Sorry, you know, offer you the opportunity to come along and hang out, do a live show, answer some questions, see if this kind of format is in, something you guys are interested in watching. You know, so we're doing a little test here. Uh, so the beams are just for ah, just for looks. How to attach? Well. John, what you want to do is you want to go and find uh, somebody that's selling a fastener that's longer than your beam that goes into your joist. You can get you can get a 10-inch screw. That's not a big deal. Okay, so 12, 16, 2 foot, 3 foot, they do exist. Okay, so you just got to call up your local fastener company. Um, I, I don't know if Amazon would sell anything like that or not. But uh, there's always a company around somewhere that's like all about fasteners. Like in Ottawa, we have a company called Ottawa Fasteners. It's not very creative, but you know where to go, right? And so that kind of thing exists. Here we are. Now I've got to make a little change here because now I've got to do the caulking of the windows to the jam. Here we are. Now, as soon as I'm done this caulking work, I'm going to have my lunch and answer some more questions. Woohoo! Can't wait to get my burrito bowl. <laughs> That's great to hear, Scott. I'm glad you're getting some work done there, buddy. Yeah. Oh, Raina. Good for you. You're ready to roll, eh? 1979. I hope it's in original condition. That'll be perfect. Ah, gotcha. Hey, thanks for getting back to me, Aphrodite. That's cool. Yeah. You know what? If your son's working and he got a big promotion, he'll have a, he'll get more. Eh, nobody when he seems don't have a job anymore. You got an 1800s house. <laughs> yeah, it's paneling, and I'm not filling the grooves. Yeah, I'm just, I retrimmed the windows, and now I'm caulking my casing to the jam, right? And just trying to get rid of some shadows and some of these other trims that are associated with the paneling job. That's just getting prepped for paint, and we're going to be painting this a little bit later here today. There we are. Why is that covered in caulking? That's nasty. All right. Okay. Oh, you're doing the, yeah, right on, Kevin. Doing the vinyl repair. You know, it's amazing how many houses are out there that got vinyl that don't even have a house wrap, right? Like one thing you got to know about vinyl, it, uh, it is not a weather barrier. It's, it's a part of the diversion system, but on a windy day, you get gallons of water behind that stuff. Look at this, left the sticker on, bloody. <laughs> uh, 
And Chris just finished watching the new siding video. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is now that I've got the uh, outside done, I don't need mine either. Those bakers are awesome. So now I got one in Ottawa and I got one here. I had to buy for this project. My goodness, we tried to do this project without buying too many tools. So it's going to be part of the fun of this series is the fact that I'm like really cheap. Like if you're watching me today, you're watching me use a, a chop saw. What kind is it even? What is this thing called? Oh, a Chicago electric, right? And it's from, uh, it's from that Harbor Freight Tool Company place. It's amazing. At least all the tools they sell me are working. Not the greatest brake system on that saw, but you know, you get what you pay for, right? All right. Call me old fashioned, but when I'm using my caulking, I use it everywhere. I don't leave a single crack unattended. I don't want to trust the paint to do the job because that might look pretty for a weekend, but you're setting yourself up for long-term failure. Paint just does not expand and contract and hold onto the surface the same, right? So you can't be lazy with this. You gotta hit everything. Somewhere out there, there's somebody saying, <laughs> Jeff Cox, every crack he sees. That's just gonna be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking into something here that I don't know what I'm getting into. All right. Ah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, good advice, Bluebird. When they're renovating an old house, start at the top, start on the outside. That's why this series we started on the outside. This particular place, the roof was in good shape, though. So we got lucky on that. That's why we started with the windows and the, the siding, my, my Florida room, right? All of this stuff. Everything has to do with curb appeal. If anything happened and I had to resell it in a hurry, I want to make sure that the things that get me the most return on my money, which is the curb appeal, that they were all done. All right, here we go. Okay. Yeah, Johnny, this is the same house. We did all the outside work. Um, I'm just actually finishing the wrapping up the video series for the master bath. It's a four piece bath. Did a uh, custom walk in shower. We're doing a uh, standalone tub. We uh, did a lot of tile in that one. Oh. Traditionally, these houses don't have a lot of tile because the structure isn't really strong enough for it. But if you add another layer of subfloor and use Schluter Dietra, you'll be surprised how much deflection there is, even on a two by six joist cavity. Now, Schluter's not going to recommend you do it by any stretch of the way, but having some experience and applying some wisdom, you don't have to worry about Schluter and their warranty. One of these days, I'm going to do a video all about companies' warranties. Because I have tried over the years to get warranties on different things. And it's always the same thing, right? 
There isn't a warranty. <laughs> Nobody's giving you a warranty. They'll come up with one excuse or another. Do you ever have a boring day and just want to entertain yourself? Go research companies' warranties on their website. You can download them usually. It's like a book of excuses why they don't have to give you a warranty. Like there's one flooring company out there on, and on page 18 or 19 of their vinyl floor warranty, they say that you have to have a welcome mat on the vinyl floor inside the entrance door and you have to own a replacement mat for while that one's being washed. Yeah. So you call up and you say, hey, uh, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is all damaged here. Your floor sucks. I want warranty. And they'll send over a, a, a warranty inspection officer. <laughs> or they'll ask you a bunch of questions. And if you say the wrong information in any one of those questions, then you voided your own warranty over the phone. And they don't even need to send the warranty officer out. Let me tell you something. Ugh. And here's another fun fact. I haven't found a flooring company yet that transfers the warranty from the guy that installed it to the guy who buys it. Right? So you go buy a house and you think you got a house with no projects. Oh, it's so pretty. They just put in a new vinyl floor and gray paint. Yay. You bought a house with no warranties. So now you got to pray that the guy that installed it did it right. And it doesn't unlock in the weeks and months following the install and in the, in the purchase of the home. This is why DIYing it is better, guys. When you hire somebody else, product warranties aren't transferable. Here we go. Some companies require you to have an installation um, certificate that you've been trained on their product before there's even a warranty. That's a fun catch, huh? Well, there's doing product training. <laughs> it's a crazy rant I'm going on right now. But here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'll stop ranting about that. But I'll ask you this one question. When's the last time you're at a dinner party? And the guy said, oh, I work in warranty claims. Right? No, you don't, nobody knows anybody who does that job. It's because nobody's giving out warranty. <laughs> anyway, one more window left and it's lunchtime. I can't wait. I'm going to answer some questions. All right. So if you're watching on your TV, in about five minutes, I'm going to be uh, just sitting down and answering questions. So you might want to get you know, your laptop opened up or your phone or whatever so you can type up your message, okay? All right, here we go. That one's done. This one isn't. Here we go. excited and I am rushing now. Okay. I got all right. Whew. Mission accomplished. Another two bites of the dust. All right, well, let's grab the burrito bowl here. I would love to have something to eat. Which one is mine, guys? No one on top. I only need one fork. <laughs> I'll grab a <coughs> bottle of water here. And I'm gonna just uh, do a little bit of this. Uh, oh. There we go. Wouldn't be lunch if there wasn't at least one grunt. <laughs> All right. Jeff is going through Vietnam flashbacks. I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All 
All right, if you're doing caulking on the outside of a house, around your windows, you want to use a polyurethane exterior caulk. Tons of manufacturers, not a big issue. Okay, but polyurethane is the way to go. And um, on wood, just so you know, the easiest way to paint a wooden window is you do the, the caulking work and then you go down to Sherman Williams and they've got an aerosol spray for your window. Okay, you spray all the wood and you spray all the glass. And it, it's, a, it's a bonding agent between paint and wood, but it doesn't really bond to glass. So what it does is it protects it. So then what you can do is you can actually just spray the window or you can just paint vigorously and, and aggressively or whatever. And then when you're done, you, you cut the caulking line of the glass and you can peel it off like a sheet of plastic. And that is money in the bank because then you won't spend the rest of your day with a little razor blade trying to scrape the edge pretty. Oh, all right. When starting the washer, it seems like the toilet on the second floor screams. Is that air in the line? <laughs> oh my goodness. When you start the washer, it's just, it's just water supply. So I don't know why the toilet would have an issue with that. Um, but yeah, if you think it's what, if you think it's air, how do you get air out of a trap line? Mm, you know what? Like I'm a renovator. I'm not so much a plumber. That's not something I run into, but you definitely probably have a venting issue if it's, if it's related to when the pump is running. Mmm. Well, this is good. Chipotle. Love it. All right. Yeah. Hope you didn't seal the windows yet. <clears throat> Me too. How are you liking Florida except for the wasps? <laughs> yeah, there's been a few. I'm going to be honest with you. I got, uh, I got two EpiPens around. I think most bugs are the same. If you don't bother them, they don't bother you. But man, don't uh, just don't just show up near their nest one day. Hmm. Hmm. My preference for a bathroom shower cock. All right, here it is. Nothing at the box store. It's New Flex. Okay. It's a Canadian company, but just so you know, the stuff they're selling in the box store is overpriced. I get my new flex at my my wholesaler for three bucks. <laughs> yeah, and if it don't smell like vinegar, don't use it. It's not the good stuff. Mmm. Masonry bricks need to be put back and remortared to my porch. Any tips? Yeah. Here's a tip. Um, tuck and, and clean up that mess as soon as possible. Okay. So you don't leave that residue on your on your bricks. Get that get that brush going and and, and, and form your lines. And make sure you clean up before you finish the day. What microphone does Jeff use? Sound quality is always on point, even outside. All right. This is a Sennheiser wireless. And just uh, this. And if I'm outside, I just take it off the clip and I put it inside the shirt to give it wind protection. Um, you know, they're not cheap. This particular kit is uh, 650 American. But... It's one of those things, you know, if you don't have good sound, you don't have a good video. So we spend the money. Oh, here we go. Any takes on Metabo acquisition on Hitachi tools department? Yeah. Another one bites the dust. Great. Fewer guys in the game. 
Well, the prices are going to go up soon. Is rock wool a good sound insulation? Yes. It's just expensive. So it all depends on what other measures you're using. Because rock wool in itself only does so much. So, you know, I barely touch it because it costs a bloody money. People think they're the same price because each bag at the store sells for the same. The fiberglass gives you twice as much square footage. So that makes twice as much money. Mmm. Mmm. Old fireplace brick. You can get masonry sealers. Okay. Um, go to Sherman Williams for that. They have a great product on the market. Is this the flipper house you're working on? I'm not really doing a flipper house. I'm doing a remodel on a uh, double wide so we can do a series of videos to empower people to be able to fix up their own place. I'm not really flipping it. If I was flipping it, I wouldn't be putting this much money into it. To be honest with you, our budget was 20,000. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I like, this is how I eat though. Our budget is 20,000 <laughs> and we're probably gonna go closer to 25, I think by the time I'm done. Just because I, I decided to do the bathrooms um, closer to the kind of bathroom that you're gonna want in your own home just to make them more valuable. Who got me into the idea of you doing YouTube? That was my son, Matthew. Yeah, I'm gonna be paying for that for the rest of my life. <laughs> if I ever do a series of subscribers, sign me up, I'm all into, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't think we'll have a hard time finding people, right? Hmm. Barbie's saying, thank you for all you do. You're my favorite YouTuber. Aw, thanks, Barbie. I am surprised. <laughs> I'm just a guy out here sharing his experience. You know, it's all good. Uh, oh, John must know how to measure siding for his house. That's easy, John. What you do is you measure the entire square footage of the house, okay? You take, your, take your squares, take your triangles, measure the whole square footage. And then, um, generally speaking, at about 10%, there's so much waste when you're cutting all that in. So, so you're not using all the cutoff pieces. That, that, that's a really good rule. Like, I've tried just going and being cheap and ordering exactly the amount of siding that I need for the amount of volume. But it is, uh, it is really tough. Because then you're, you're, always, you're always installing small pieces somewhere, right? And siding's not that expensive, so just do yourself a favor. Get a superior look and a better performance because the less locking joints you have, especially on smaller pieces, the straighter the lines, right? The easier it is to install. Mm. All right. Uh, Jonathan's doing a whole bathroom. What order should I focus on? Removal or installation? Wow, I better start at the bottom of this because by the time I read the question, it's off the screen. <laughs> yeah, Matt's the person you should be thanking for the channel for sure. And if you ever bump into Matt, you owe him a beer for sure. Um, well, that's going to be counterproductive for Matthew, isn't it? <laughs> uh, will you be caulking the floor so rotus and palmetto bugs, etc. don't get into the house? They're a big problem down here. No, John, what I do is I actually pay for the uh, people to come by and treat every month. We don't have any bugs in here, and I've had the floors open. All right? They come every month. They spray inside the house. They do a treatment outside the house, and, and it is it, – I don't get them. So it works. Um, that's worth it. I don't think you could possibly – even – I'm tearing it apart. I'm adding a new subfloor. I don't think even with all of that I could ever close up every hole. So it's easier just to treat the property. All right. Uh, Danny's on his second bathroom after watching all of our videos. Cheers to that. Right on, dude. Um, yeah. There you go. Hello from Canada. <laughs> yeah, I'm homesick kind of. Uh, there we go. Okay. Gautier wants advice for square. Uh, 
Um, I'm not even sure what that means. Get one. Yeah, that's a good piece of advice. Pardon? He's from Spain? Okay. Ah, well, they put it in Spanish. Michelle can read that. That'll help. We'll help clear that up. Michelle's pretty good with Spanish. So uh, if, if you ask the, the question, the tool. Okay, so you, you want to know about the tool. And, and is it, you want to know how to use it or you want to know which one to buy? That'll help. Um, <laughs> My wife decided to take a sledgehammer to our second bathroom so I could start the reno because I've watched enough of your videos to handle it. <laughs> She's like, basically what she's saying is, well, if you're not going to be around doing nothing but watching his videos, I'm going to put your ass to work. That's good. Good for her. I like that motivation. Uh, how big should it be? Oh, you're square. You know, I have two. I have a small one. It's a, it's a nine inch. And then I have a, I have a 12 and then I also have a 16 by 24 and that's more of a framing square. So it's not about the size. Yeah, the big ones are very expensive. Um, generally speaking, with framing, uh, there, there are cheaper and easier ways to get square than using a big framing square. You can use a measuring system, the hypotenuse triangle. Yeah, measure out three, four, and then five to connect the dots on the triangle. And that, if you have those numbers perfect, then that's square. And you can double that. You can go to six to eight and then 10, right? So that works. Uh, there you go. Wife said it's time to get to work. <laughs> Watching the stream too long, right? <laughs> if I vent a range hood out of my roof, how do I cut a hole in the roof so it lines up with the pipe? Well, the good news is the pipe is only four inch. Or maybe range hood be six inch, sorry. Um, so the, 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 the attachment that goes out of your roof has got a huge flange on it. So what you do is you cut a square the same size as the dimension of the pipe. And then the flange will cover over top of that. So it's not gonna be difficult at all. Nine foot ceilings, vent fan needed in bathroom, blah, blah, blah. So can vent straight out, concerned about trap moisture. Oh, bathroom's near an exterior wall, so can vent straight out, good. Ex concerned about trap moisture. Yeah, you don't want to trap moisture in your attic. You definitely want to get that vented out. Um, you're gonna find that in a lot of cases, uh, bathrooms, if it's on the gable side, you can go up in the attic and run straight out the house. If it's on the roof pitch side, then you can go up, you can install the vent close to the, close to the window, like within a couple of feet. And then while you're up, you cut that hole, you can get up there with your sawzall and you can cut the top plate out. Cause there's two two by fours on the flat or two by sixes. If you cut the top and there's enough room to get the ducting in and into the soffit, and then you can open the window and reach out and drill a hole through the soffit with a hole saw. And then you can feed the pipe and pull the pipe right there. Like, just like that. And then you can connect it and then you can shove it back up in the soffit and screw it to the soffit. And that's a great way to install a vent, even on a second floor bathroom, because you don't have to get on a ladder. All right. What am I doing? Daniel wants to know, he probably just joined the stream. We're, we're, we're doing some trim work and some caulking and some painting in the front of my trailer here today. So we thought we'd do a live show. I'm supposed to be having my lunch, but I'm not doing too much eating. Anyway, we're just taking a break to answer some questions and have a bite to eat. I'm getting back to work. Mm. Can you switch the positions of dishwasher and sink? Yeah, sure. But then you got to position, you got to move the power for the dishwasher. You got to move the water supply for the hot and cold for the sink. You got to move the drain. You got to move them in. If you can't move the vent, what you can do is you can buy a dishwasher for a um, uh, shorter cabinet. There's two sizes. They're standard for 24. There's a 21. Because there's a lot of islands that are going out there today that are, are narrower cabinets. And they're putting dishwashers in them. So they make a 21-inch dishwasher depth. And that leaves you room to leave your existing plumbing and just run it along the back wall into the cabinet next to it. And you put in a shorter dishwasher. And you still have that space to leave your mechanical. It's a, it's a great hack um, if you don't have enough room or you don't have the opportunity to open it up. But just be concerned about your venting, okay? Because if you're gonna start moving your mechanical, you're looking at a permit and you're looking at inspections and you're looking at making sure your venting is up to code. Which 
basically means to be attached. Hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, listen. One thing about old houses is you got those high ceilings. Um, I've been in a lot of bathrooms over the years where they they drop the ceiling to run all the mechanical and run events, right? Because the the the, the energy it takes to cut a hole in the roof in in attics that are really not accessible is just it's exhausting. You got to drop the whole ceiling in order to drill a hole for a vent, and then you got to insulate from the wrong direction back with bats. And nice to be able to just throw in a, a fake ceiling. Best place to buy window replacements in the Ottawa area are, uh, you know, if uh, if you have if you have the, the the wherewithal to go and open up an account, and then you go down to um, well, having a brain fart. Yeah, that happens. Gentech, go down to Gentech and open up an account as a commercial contractor. Okay, just a cash account. And then uh, that's all you need to know. You can order your windows and you can get the contractor rate. They give it to anybody who says they're a contractor. You don't got to prove nothing. Just dress like someone who works for a living and go down there and open it up. And you'll be laughing. And Daniel Rogers has joined the membership. Cheers, buddy. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hey, here's a quick question for you. Yeah, that's the one. We're going to be having a meeting in the next week or two with the team. And we got a whole team now, right? I got, I got, a, uh, I got a CEO. I got a channel manager. I've got production people. I've got editors. We're having a meeting with the team. We're talking about what we're going to be doing with the membership program to make it better. So if you got any suggestions, you want to throw it in the comments, guys. I'd love to hear from you. All right, here we go. 1951 home, Concord, North Carolina. Old electrical should I upgrade and bring up to code. Okay. 1951 home. So first of all, there's all kinds of things about 1951 that was weird and different. You probably have your, your wall plugs. Are, are Some are constant power and some are just set on a lamp, light switch. And it's designed to be plugged into lamps around the room and you don't have overhead lighting. So those are the kind of things that you run into. Um, poor, poor wiring for the kitchens as well, right? Here's my thing. If you're going to go through the expense of rewiring a house and you're not doing it yourself and you're going to hire this out, consider removing and changing some of your floor plan around the living area. Because in the 50s homes, you have a small kitchen, you've got a rec room, you've got a living room, and a dining room. And in most cases, if you got rid of those walls and more, more open concept, you could have a much bigger kitchen. And the new kitchen wiring code doesn't require a lot of room in the in the, the electrical panel. So it's easy to upgrade a kitchen and put in a bigger space. There's usually lots of panel space. So, you know, have a consultation with an electrician about what your power requirements are going to be if you change it. And then design around what's practical. But I'd be, I'd be pulling out walls in a 50s home if I was you. Just saying. Most of them are 8-foot ceilings. Most of them have got a truss construction. And so you're perfectly capable of knocking out all kinds of stuff. And all you got to do is confirm that with a structural engineer, which can be done for about a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks for a site visit. Right. And then Bob's your uncle, man. There you go. But I would not update wiring in an old floor plan. You're throwing away a really huge opportunity because that's one of the biggest costs you have is, the, is, is getting the electrical done. And if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my money's worth and modernizing the house to get top dollar when I go to sell. Just priming our ceiling and the paper on the drywall seems to be flaking when we roll over it. Uh-oh. The paper on the drywall is flaking when you roll over it? I'm going to guess... That's not new drywall. And that's probably not paper that's flaking. It's probably the old paint job that's flaking. You probably had somebody that went and put latex over oil without a bonding primer. And so now it, it attached, but it didn't really bond. Okay. So now you come and you're introducing new liquid. And as soon as you start back rolling, it basically has disengaged the old paint from the oil. And that's what's probably happening. I would stop. 
okay? Get a can, a pump spray can, and spray water on the ceiling, and then give it a minute, and then see if it all scrapes right off. And if it does, then you need a, a bonding primer. And there's two ways to go. They have latex products designed for that. They also sell just flat oil. And a flat oil will bond to any old shiny oil, and latex paint will bond to a flat oil. So that's how you make that transition. A lot of people made that mistake in the 70s and 80s when they switched from oil to latex paints. Oh, there's so much of that out there. All right. Old drywall, you scrape the popcorn. Ooh, okay. So the paper's lifting off. Wow. Okay, um, Daniel, the best thing you can do for yourself if it's actually drywall is don't use the roller, okay? Go out and um, grab a cheap uh, sprayer, okay? Like something for doing dent fence stains and stuff. Just a little cheap Wagner sprayer that you plug in on a cord, all right? And then you spray your primer on the ceiling and let it absorb, let it bond, let it dry, and then go from there. And hopefully that works for you. All right, cheers, man. Uh, so you've done some electrical around the house for outlets and there's ground, but whoever did the wiring had to be new at the trade. Um, yeah, that's possible, <laughs> right? Um, we also didn't have building code back when you had your house built. And so, you know, you had people that were like, I'm an electrician because I got grandfathered into it and they never learned how to do the trade properly. That's not uncommon back in those days. All right. Getting ready to paint the exterior of the house. Quick overview of the process. Is it necessary to prime if it's already painted? No, but you, um, you need to wash it. Get a pressure washer. Let it dry first as well. Okay? Don't be in a hurry. And then uh, make sure you mask everything off if you're spraying. If you're, doing, uh, um, if you're using brush, just remember this. There's, there's a rule about painting we used to have. Uh, there's no such thing as a paint drip that the painter doesn't know about, all right? So pay attention, work from inside the brush, don't lather it all up, so, and right, and don't, be, don't be knocking things flying and having your bristles spraying everywhere. You'll just have paint all over the place. Use tarps, all that kind of stuff, all right? And uh, have a garden hose handy if you're on a ladder and paint drips on somewhere else that you don't want it, wash it off right away. That 100% acrylic exterior paint stuff, you don't have five minutes if you want to wash it. And then grab yourself some 100% acetone nail polish remover or acetone at the hardware store. They both work. And that'll take any of that paint off of another surface that you don't want it to be on. And that should help you out. Um, don't forget about my lunch. Yeah, you know what? I don't really care to eat. I'm, it's, it's good and all, but I am. I mean... The stream's only four hours, not 20, you know? Hmm. <laughs> oh, Alan is a handyman. He's one of our members. He's in Leesburg today. Isn't that fun? Nope. It is a gorgeous day. You know, we've had a week where it's been uh, thunder showers every afternoon, so this is, uh, this is nice. I actually got out and went down to Mount Dora yesterday afternoon with my wife. Took a walk, did a little bit of uh, sightseeing and people watching. Yeah, that's our thing. We just like to sit there and try to figure out the stories of people. It's kind of like a Friends episode. It's just bizarre. All right. Uh, and we got Molly here with a 1986 upstate New York attached garage. Had an area drywalled in next to the house, but nothing is in there. Any idea why? I recently had squirrels try to live there, so might remove. Mm, okay, so the um, the drywall uh, attached garage, it also has a, a tape coat on it as well. And that's part of the um, you know, building code so that it keeps gases from working its way into the house. So it's an air sealing procedure, okay? And they should also have it caulking on, on the bottom to the masonry where it meets down there. Um, very common, okay? So that's what that's for. So if you rip it off, just remind yourself, um, you've now... Uh, removed an integral part of the house that's there for fire protection and for to protect you from the carbon monoxide from if anybody driving into that garage, which happens. Most people don't turn off the car, throw it in neutral, and then coast in. 
right? So <laughs> you don't want that carbon monoxide working its way into that. So make sure you replace that seal if you open it up to fix a problem. Maybe you got a hole in your frame somewhere, the squirrels have messed it up. You can fix all that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm really enjoying Florida. It's just brilliant down here. Um, any recommendations on painting over stained wood? Builder used built-in stain and sealant now, and he's painting there. Yeah, you know, give it a light sanding. And then use a proper primer, right? It's oil-based products or stains mostly. So you could just throw a little water on it. If it beads up, you know, generally speaking, you know it's an oil base. Or you can take some acetone and try to wipe it. And if it doesn't make a mark, then it's oil base. If it makes a mark, it's water base. And then you can get a primer. Whenever you have questions about your products and your primers, um, really just go to an actual paint store, right? Like I, I know I'm not a big fan of box stores when it comes to this kind of stuff because they're very limited in their product selection. And they usually, um, the people working there don't have the product knowledge that you'd like them to, okay? But in professional paint stores, these guys take training seminars and courses and the managers know what the hell's going on. They're not just human resource managers, they're product experts. So it's a better place to go. Or try going over to like an Ace Hardware, if you're in down the States or a home hardware up in Canada. Do you know that those stores have twice as many locations as the Home Depots? And there's one closer to you than the Home Depot in most cases. And the owners are like, they're invested in the success of that business. So they understand the products and they take training seminars on a regular basis. Um, we just finished doing a series for home hardware in Canada. We did a couple of videos for them, uh, doing some training for the for the for the people in the, in the stores, and that was awesome. Hopefully, we're going to be able to do some more work like that. But uh, I'm telling you right now, gone are the days when you can go to the box store and get retired professionals working in the aisle. They just don't pay for them anymore. They've cut the cost. They've gone from we can you can do it, we can help, to you can do it maybe. But uh, we'll just tell you what aisle all this stuff is in, but we don't know what anything is. We don't know how it works. We don't know what goes with what. They don't know if a nail goes with a hammer or a screw. Like it's that bad. So go to smaller stores. They're more interested and invested in your personal success there. And they'll give you better advice. Oh my God, poor Jeffrey. He's got a famous bath fitter tub. It sits on my tile floor. Is it possible to get those tiles out from under it? Or am I looking at a floor tub remodel? Nah, if you got tile floor, Jeffrey, you can just smash the living daylights out of it and it'll all break loose and you can just scrape it all out. No big deal. It's just a caulking bead. Just cut the caulking bead, smash the tile, go. You're going to be just fine. And then when you put the new tile back or whatever you're doing, don't put it right up against the tub. Leave a small gap so there's no contact because there's always deflection in the floor even when it's tile. Okay. And that's where the squeaks come from when you walk in the room. And then you finish that off with another bead of caulking and you'll be just fine, bud. Cheers. I just knew you were going to say kills. <laughs> Wish we had a paint store in our town. Well, where do you live that you don't have a paint store? Oh, my goodness. That must be a small town. If you don't have a paint store, you sure don't have a Home Depot then, do you? Mm. NV Wilderness. That's not even, is that Nevada? Northeast Nevada. Well, there you go. Well, now you got a paint store in your town. Right now you can use uh, you can use C two. They'll deliver. <laughs> we got a link. Anyway, um, it's an option. Oh wow, man! Oh man! Okay, guys, I'm gonna just grab a couple more bites and then I'm gonna get on to the next step here. I've been two hours already. Wow, that was amazing. Well, this is fun. I think I'd like to do this again. Anybody else enjoying this? Hmm. Well, cheers, Timothy. I'm glad to help, man. That's my pleasure. Here we go. I can't believe this has been going on for two hours already. Wow. Let's get rid of all that. I'm just going to check my mic pack batteries. I bought the good ones today, so they should be lasting. Oh, yeah. We're killing it. All right. Good mic pack batteries should last six hours. But I didn't change them today because I haven't hardly used it. So 
All right, here we go. Hello from Montreal. Well, cheers to Montreal. All right. Uh. Oh. So Barbie says they just moved to a new home, and the people before painted over the wall texture with latex, and now it's peeling off. What do we do to paint over it? I really wish I had an answer for that. Um, I don't know if there's a product on the market yet that will bond paint to a previous surface when you apply it on the new surface. I just don't think that exists. Your, your best bet might be to... Uh, might be to just get a, get some water on there and use a, a wire brush, right? And just gently and scrape it all off. Wow. Wow. Mm. Sometimes it's just easier to put new drywall on. <laughs> okay. I do. Yeah. Cheers, John. I'm glad. That's cool. Texas. Nice. All right. Oh. Peel it off. Yeah. Unfortunately, Barbie. Sometimes you just can't move forward until you go back to the beginning. And that sucks to hear, I know, but... <sighs> my, my, my. All right. Boom. Rule number one when we're painting. Always sand your walls. We're good? Okay. Nice. A new window in a wall? Yeah, it's only difficult if it's uh, load bearing. Then you got to build a wall two feet in front of the old one. You got to open up. You got to put in a new header to transfer load back to a place where it can carry the load. And then you frame for the window and then you install the window and then you got to seal the window and you got to do the exterior facade. So there's a lot of steps. And so it's not surprising it's hard to find someone to do it. There's enough jobs out there that they don't have to work that hard and take that kind of responsibility. So you're going to be hard pressed to find someone eager enough in today's marketplace. Um, I would call a really good handyman. He might be the only guy I'd be interested just because, you know, it's a fun build. You know, there's nothing wrong with a fun build. You know, as builders, we like to have fun once in a while too. It's not all just about the money. Sometimes it is about, you know, the experience and the trade and the craft. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit more time for this one. Yep, that's not ready yet. I remember, and this is just a trailer, and this is wood paneling from 45 years ago. So I'm not going for perfect, but I wouldn't mind not ugly. Okay. There we go. Let's put some paint gear together here. Ladies and germs, what do we got? Here, I'll bring this out here. And I've got a paint stick around here somewhere. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. And I got a five and one. Yep. All right. Now, for today's program, I'm using Sherwin Williams Super Paint. Okay. Uh, you can say all you want about how wonderful Bear is. I think it's all marketing and psychological warfare. Um, I'm not a fan. And I opened up a cash account over at Sherwin Williams. And then I asked for special pricing on my favorite paint. And they give it to you. This is a $60 can of paint. I only pay 38 bucks for it. You won't get a deal like that at Home Depot. 
You don't get to walk in and say, listen, I'm going to use exclusively the bear whatever, because there's five lines now, right? And bears now got five lines of paint. Anyway, yeah, that's right. They used to be the cheapest paint. But now you can go ahead and spend uh, $70, $80 a gallon on, on paint a bear, no problem. Home Depot's more than happy to take your money. Oh. And did you know that bear paint is only sold in Home Depot? That's it. It's not available anywhere else. It's because it's their own paint. Anytime a company that big is selling a product made by themselves, they have no middlemen and no other distribution. Now, honestly, if they wanted to, they could sell their paint at $20 to $5 a gallon. They'd still be making a killing. All right, here we go. But I'm not going to get all upset at Home Depot over that. That's not their fault. I mean, as long as you guys are going there to buy paint, they're going to keep on making money off you. I just don't think it's a good paint and it's a good value. That's all. Maybe one of these days they'll go out of their way to try to change my mind, but I've used the product in the past. And I'm talking, man, 20 years ago, and it was a disaster. And I was like, I'm never using that paint again. <laughs> and so I'm not. There we are. We are just going to be cutting a lot of cutting today. I'm going to get a really sore wrist, I'm sure. This is how you paint, guys. Smack some paint into the brush. Okay, that's it. Paint from inside the brush. Makes life simple. Boom. And the rest of that is history. Now, I'm going to put the painted casings on after the fact, right? After the vinyl floor goes on. And we're going to do that video too. I actually have a great new product that I'm trying out. I'm excited to share it with you. Ah. Okay, what do we got here? Got some kind of debris. Okay, interesting. Now, the reason I'm going with this light color is it actually is going to dry a little darker. It's got a bit of a bit on the gray scale, but not dark, right? You have a nice big space here with a uh, vaulted ceiling. Last thing you want to do is make the space dark. What we do have to do though is use the tip of the brush in every one of these grooves because I can't get a roller in here, All right? So I got to intentionally paint every one of these little spaces by hand with the brush. And that's going to make this a two coat cover. Nothing you can do about it. And I'm trying to leave this little mini crown piece here painted the same as the ceiling. All right. Because it's a kind of a theme I'm going with through the whole house. I used a, uh, a wood primer. It's a very flat paint to prime all of the paneling. Uh, and now I'm just coming back and brush and roll. And so while I was spraying that primer, I did the ceilings and I did the trim. And I'm like, I'll just leave that and we'll be good. There we are. Now, because of what's going on with this wood paneling, I don't understand it. Things are just not drying as fast as I hope they would today. That's fine. So what we're going to do is after I'm done the first coat, we'll probably be taking a break before we do the second coat. 
And I think I'm going to turn the phone on again, and we can take some live calls. Yeah, imagine that, eh? <laughs> A renovation contractor who actually is going to take time to answer the phone. <laughs> I am finding that to be rather hilarious, and I don't know why. Uh, hi from UK. Awesome live. Never used to sand my walls until your advice. What a difference, right? Nice and smooth. Looks awesome. Good for you. Good for you. You know, sometimes it's the little things that make a big difference, eh? Yeah. That's the fun part, you know, we've got folks from all over the world watching that paint video, man. All right, well, that is not bad at all. Okay. All right. I'm thinking, just because of the way this is working out, I am definitely going to be needing to do some caulking touch-ups before the second coat. And that's the cool thing about caulking. It almost always covers in one coat. So then in a complex scenario like this, where I'm not going to get every imperfection the first time around, I don't mind taking the time to do a little bit of caulking work. There we are. Okay. <laughs> Nothing more fun to do than watch paint dry, right? Literally, that's what we're going to be doing here. That's why we're going to go take some live calls after I paint this wall. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take me too long because, like, you know, you paint in a video and everyone's like, wow, that guy's a good painter. But you paint live and they're like, wow, he's really slow. <laughs> if I didn't talk so much, I'd get this done faster, right? There we are. Oh, the Renault version of Bob Ross. <laughs> Happy little walls.
Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There we go. Try not to lose your shorts, Jeff, eh? My goodness. And I wasn't sure if I was going to use the uh, sprayer or the brush and roll, but, you know, the sprayer would work. It's just so messy. It, the, the, the overspray just makes it impossible to, to breathe in here after a little while. That stuff is so light, it just floats around forever. And honestly, I just don't want to have my camera in a room without overspray going on. If I can avoid it, it'll last a lot longer if I give it happier environments to work in. Almost missed a spot here. Wood paneling isn't going to bond very well, so I might as well make sure I got a primer on there. Okay. Work over here. Oh, I got to do the pop. Top section first. Yes, this is the trailer, guys, if you just join us. I'm just working on uh, painting the front room. It's all paneling. And you'll see in this area of Florida, a remodel in Florida is not remove the paneling and install drywall. The remodel is simply paint the paneling so it no longer looks like 1980. And I've seen houses for sale that had the paneling painted. Let me tell you something, for the cost of a trailer down here, that is a really good look. I am not ashamed to say it. So, that's what we're doing. Anything looks better with a coat of paint on it. And this should empower you guys to pick up a brush and roller and go paint something. It looks better and it's worth more money. You just can't go wrong, right? Okay, here we go. The windows look familiar, right? There we go. Speaking, of, why do you have any happy? Do you have any reno happy little mistakes that turned out better than the original intended outcome? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> the bathroom in the master. Um, we were going to do a real basic remodel there. We're going to put in a tub and a simple walk-in shower system, probably a shower pan. And then uh, when we ripped out the old shower, we found out that it hadn't been attached to the plumbing. And there was massive water damage. And uh, I was so invested in rebuilding that thing, I just decided to turn it into a custom walk-in shower because it was, the work was already going into it. So, yeah, that was a happy little accident. It took a little bit extra time. But I think at the end of the day, I don't really care what the housing market is like around here. Uh, if there's only one person in all of Florida looking for a house 
and they're in this kind of price range, then they'll buy this one. Because <laughs> there's just no argument. This is going to be the nicest double wide. Uh, forget the state, probably the world when I'm done. <laughs> that's just the way that's going to work. I, uh, I have no doubt about it. You'll, you'll get to see some of the preview of that master bath because we have a video in a few weeks coming up where I resize the windows for that bathroom. They had two little arrow slits, you know, like from a castle. It was just ridiculous. And I think it was probably for the purpose of providing some, some privacy. But there was just no light coming into that room. And what I did is I, uh, I opened up the outside and I rebuilt the frame on the inside and installed a nice big window to get some daylight in because that's the sun side. I don't know about you ladies, but all the ladies in the com comments will know daylight is more important than fake light when you're putting makeup on. Huh? Maybe a renovator, but I listen to my clients. So I know that to be true. So there you go. Wow. You can resize the hole. We took off the siding. We, re we stitched it all back together again. Some yellow, some white. And then I did something unthinkable. Ugh. I painted the vinyl siding outside. Yes, you can do that too. And it looks amazing. All right. I've got to find myself my sanding block. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm gonna to get to the end of this wall over here. All right, here we go. Gotta get my bristles right in there, a tiny little spot. Here we go. There we are. Just pull it out now. Nice. Okay. Well, you know, painting something like this, it actually is a, it's a lot of work with the, with the cutting, but I'm going to use a three quarter inch nap roller so that when I roll, it fills all these little grooves in. It's just, you got to take the time to Force those bristles in wherever there's a joint, right? Because the nap's not going to get that done. All right, I'm off the ladder. That's good. Step one. Okay. All right, since I don't have any baseboards, I don't need to worry about, um, you know, detailing the bottom. I'm gonna buy some nice three and a half inch baseboards to put on here. And I got a uh, oscillating tool so that I can just trim all of those trims as I go to install them afterwards. Yeah, thank you. Here we go. Wow, let me get my little hammer here. Left it around here, didn't I? My hammer, my hammer, my hammer. Ha, ah, thank you. I've got a couple of brad nails sticking out, oh, little buggers. And here, okay. There, better.
know, when you use caulking and dry decks, especially on this many windows, you better take time with a sponge. Just go around and detail everything. Because the second you put paint on here, <laughs> it's a lot more work to clean that up and go backwards. <laughs> wow. So this spruce, the last time you were here, I was converting a church in Canada. Now you're renovating a double wide in Florida. Yeah, you've missed a deck in an outdoor oasis. You've missed a, you missed a huge shed that is also an outdoor bar. You've missed an entire basement renovation. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So Spruce, what you should do is you should go and share this right now. Hit the share button, <laughs> share it with other friends. And then uh, the algorithm will remind you about our videos more on a regular basis. It seems to be the most effective way to get suggested in our feed is if you do something like share it and then hit the like button, you're telling the algorithm that you uh, don't wanna be missing all the videos. I don't, I don't do the YouTube thing as much as I probably should. You know, so you only see my content once in a while when you're searching for help. But truth of it is, if you don't want to miss out, that is the way that you get that solved. So don't hit the like button for me, guys. Hit it for yourself. Tell YouTube that you like this stuff. And then uh, next time I go live, it'll remind, it'll remind you that I'm live. You can join in on the fun. Maybe even get a question answered or two, eh? Here we go. Probably lost my bet on the chances of Jeff going all drywall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, Caleb. I, uh, I don't mind going all drywall, but you know what? The problem with opening up all these walls is that the electrical in here, it's all mounted to the paneling, not the frame. That is one of the weirdest things. These are temporary structures, so I don't even own a house. I just own a temporary structure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's my duster hard at work, eh? Okay. Johnny, if you're watching painters doing two prime coats, they're just using cheap primer. It's not necessary. You know, uh, decent drywall primer is probably going to run you only $15 to $17 a gallon. If you go any cheaper than that, you're just putting water on the wall. Then maybe you do need a second coat. But 
for a couple dollars a gallon to save that all of that work. It's just not necessary. I don't know any application of primer where it requires two coats. But I don't know any paint application in the world. You can get away with one coat of finished paint. No matter how much they try to sell that crap in the can, it does not work. One and done paints are just, they're just not true. It's just a lie. And they leave everybody wondering why they're such a lousy painter that it didn't work for them. It's not the painter, it's the paint. Can't paint one coat. That's just an impossibility. Here we go. Even if you're painting a white flat ceiling white, you need two coats. Because the proper way to paint a ceiling requires you to do one coat in each direction to get proper coverage. <laughs> So the technique I'm using here right now is to put the paint in the brush, clean the outside, right? Set the bristles in the, in the groove, and then just run it along. That's it. I let the brush determine the line because there's no paint going up on the, on the edge of that window because there's no paint on that edge of the brush because I clean that off before I paint. This is the system that I designed so I could train people to paint faster with less experience. Because as a contractor, man, it was maddening trying to teach people how to be good with the brush because it's a bit of an art. It's a kind of an art skill, right? So I just learned if you learn to paint from inside the brush, you can draw much better lines, much faster. <laughs> and you can teach anybody how to do it in just a few minutes. Here we go. Now, one of the things about trim, less is more, okay? You're gonna put two coats for sure. Sometimes you might even put three. But the thing is, if you don't wanna have the paint lines from the <laughs> bristle everywhere, the way you deal with that is you put on less paint. Okay, and a good quality paint will melt when you apply it. Okay, and it'll turn into a nice finished sheen. The cheap, thick paints that they sell at the box stores go on looking like you just <laughs> cultivated a farmer's field, right? Like the plowing match. <laughs> they put grooves in that like you wouldn't believe. Here we go. Let's get rid of all that. Numbers and calculations. So far in this uh, series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Historic windows, yeah. Here's my advice, get them painted. Most historic windows operate just fine for energy efficiency. I've had them audited before, okay? There's no need to change them if you take care of them. And then all you gotta do is you go down to Sherwin-Williams and they've got this aerosol spray and you spray it on the whole window plus the wood, okay? It primes the wood. And then you, you paint all of those pieces of wood, sloppy as you want to paint. And then when you're done, you take your knife and you just cut all of those extra paint out of the way and it peels off like a sheet of plastic. It's like painting a brand new door that has the plastic on the glass, okay? But it bonds to the wood. So it's a brilliant little product. And you know what? I haven't had an opportunity to do that video, but I'm gonna probably just go over to the uh, Habitat for Humanity store and buy an old window. When I get back to the church property this in, in July, I'm thinking I'm gonna do that as a video. I'll just restore a window for you guys so you can see the process. 
It'd be better if I could be in someone's house because then I can open up the wall cavity, show you the lead weight, you know, reconnect the ropes and all that kind of jazz. And you can still buy the ropes today. You can always fix those up. You can go to the store and order the glass for replacement. You can go to that glass store and they'll sell you the little metal triangles that pinch the glass to the wood and you can reinstall broken panes. And it costs about five bucks for a pane of glass. <laughs> so, you know, you're in good shape there. You can put glazing on the outside of that window that looks original. Or you can use like modern polyurethane caulking. Just saying, those old windows, they're amazing. You take good care of them, they'll take good care of you. The only thing about wood windows is you got to paint the outside every few years because of the fact is that we're not allowed to paint with oil anymore. We used to have oil paint for exterior that would last 15, 20 years. And then they switched it over to save the environment. Now everybody doesn't paint their windows every five, every, every three to five years. The windows rot and they have to get all the windows replaced. Well, I don't know what's worse for the environment. <sighs> I know what's worse for your wallet. Not a big fan of throwing things out or working perfectly fine. <sighs> oh, I got me some paint on that brush. Holy cow. Let's clean it out. Let me drag this around a little bit more. Uh, yeah, 9022 apartment windows are rotted through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We even have products on the market now, guys. Uh, you can remove the rotten wood, okay? And, and you can rebuild the window with products like plastic wood. You can shape it, and then you can like carve it and drill through it. It's pretty fantastic. So you can take a, an old piece of wood window that's kind of rotted out and rebuild even just the bottom sash altogether. There we go. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. See, here we are. I'm figuring out all these spaces where I need caulking now. That's all making sense now, eh? All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, pencil me in. Well, here's my schedule for the next few weeks. I'm down here till the end of June working on this project, hopefully getting the uh, master bedroom, the master bathroom, the master walk-in closet all finished, getting all the flooring installed in this place. Getting the kitchen and the living room done. I've already completed all the outside work before it became rainy season, you know, so that was smart. It's always worth it to consider the weather patterns in your area when you're planning your rentals. Then I'm back in Ottawa for eight to 12 weeks. We're not exactly sure. We're shooting a series of videos up there. And then I'm somewhere in the midst of that. I got to go to VidCon in, is it June? Or Vid Summit? I can't remember. I'm glad I got my daughter running the company now and she keeps my schedule for me. I just wake up and check the calendar and do exactly what she tells me to do. <laughs> Makes my life nice and simple. Gentlemen, life is so much simpler when women are telling you what to do. <laughs> and then you do it. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, my brain operates one task at a time. When I'm in the middle of a renovation project, I'll just wake up in the middle of the night, two, three o'clock in the morning, and my brain will just be firing off on all cylinders, and I'll be making plans and thinking of things I hadn't thought about. And it drives me nuts. I have learned...
to do what I'm good at and farm off all the rest of the work of things that I'm not. I think I can run a renovation project out of my head. I don't even have, need to have notes. But I sure will forget. Put gas in my truck. <laughs> Now my new truck talks to me, tells me when I need to put it in. So that solved that problem. There we go. Single pane windows, yes, are still relatively efficient. It's not the window pane itself, it's the air leakage, right? So look at it this way. If you if you install all the trims properly, and when the window closes, it's sitting right tight against all those trims. It's still a pretty decent window. <laughs> like, it's kind of funny. The world's been solving problems that didn't really exist for a long time and charging you a lot of money to do it. I'll ask you this question. If you go to buy an old Victorian home that's com completely remodeled in a Victorian style and you have brand new modern windows in it, does that look like a Victorian home anymore? Mm-hmm. Yep. There's your answer. Trust me, if you can afford an old Victorian home in the middle of town, you've got enough money to throw an extra couple hundred bucks a year at your air conditioning and heating bills. Those buttes that are worth restoring, they're only worth restoring in certain neighborhoods and they gotta be original neighborhoods to larger cities. They're just not worth restoring because the cost of the remodel is just too extravagant for the resale market to hold, support it. But we've got a few areas in Ottawa where those houses are definitely worth fixing up. I've done a few of them, let me tell you. It is a lot of fun. But you got to know a few secrets, like when you're in an old house, the floor, that hardwood, tongue and groove, um, depending on the age, it's the actual subfloor as well. So you don't just go start cutting it out because you're changing the flooring in the bathroom. Okay? <laughs> That's your subfloor. And it could be structural load bearing as well. So don't be that guy. Where you're ripping out your bathroom floor with a sawzall and then the roof comes crashing down. <laughs> uh, oh, I missed that with the block. Uh, whoops. All right. Love a good 501. Here we go. You've got drywall from 1979 in your shoes because this man convinced me I could do my own shower. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, K Buckets just tore out a deck and an above ground pool as a first home project. I'm still in close closing. Thankfully, the seller let me in the yard a little early. Love your channel. I've <laughs> got a lot of work to do. Wow, that's ambitious. I love it. You're renovating it. You don't even have your <laughs> you don't even you don't even have your own name on the wall yet. That's awesome. Holy cow. Well, you know, depending on where you are, you got to take advantage of the weather, right? I ever tell you guys that story about when I got my first above ground pool? I got it for free. I just went in Kijiji and there were people advertising you could have my pool for free if you come and take it away because nobody wanted to do the the work to disassemble it. So, went over there, <laughs> unscrewed the 400 bolts, rolled it up, threw it in my truck, and brought it home, and then reinstalled it. Same day. Called the water truck, boom, had a pool. <laughs> the only thing I bought was the water. That was a fun summer. Ah, uh, okay. Man. Almost ready to pull the roller out. This is good.
I feel my shorts getting away from me a little bit here. Holy cow. All right. Ah, the appraisers on the house. Yes. Well, you know, there's a lot of rules about having a pool nowadays, and a lot of liability. So I can appreciate the complexity of that scenario. Here's a question. Peter says, when installing a frost-free hose bib outside, does it have to be installed straight down or can it be kind of sideways? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be straight down. It's water supply, it's under pressure. As long as it's 45 degrees, it'll drain out. Um, but regardless, I recommend before the winter comes, if you get winter, close the inside line and then take a vacuum outside, open it up and vacuum out the water that's left in there just in case it's installed on a slight angle upwards and it's holding water inside the house because that's where it'll blow. All right. Nice, you remove wallpaper and you're repairing, doing the spackling as we speak. There you go. Okay. <laughs> That's a great one. Chris is saying that it's nice to see a live stream of how much work goes into getting a job done. So now he can show his wife <laughs> that he's not just farting around and <laughs> killing time, but it actually takes time to do this stuff. Yeah, let me tell you, this is work, you know? Anyone who thinks painting is easy uh, has never painted before. It is work. You know, it is sweat, it is energy. One of the reasons why it has such a great return on investment, because most people don't take the time to learn the skills. They have to hire people to do this stuff. And that ain't cheap. So there's an inherent return on investment based on the amount of labor that goes into a project. Here we go. And I am officially cut in. Yay. Wow. And I'm not too dirty, but I am rushing a little bit, to be honest with you. I got my heart rate up pretty good over here. I'm out of water. Oh my goodness. Hey, let's not throw it in the paint. Whoa, okay, thank you. Good, good throw, baby. It's a nice curve. Yeah, I used to pitch what? All right, excuse me. All right, here we go. Uh, Wooster handle, okay? Really solid cage, doesn't bend. This pin locks, it doesn't untwist as you roll. Adjustable, fantastic, microfiber. That's my rig. What we do is we take our tray that holds almost a whole gallon of paint. We take it close to where we're working. Okay, lift and then roll. Push that paint in there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Don't feel guilty watching. There is more to learn from watching somebody than there is from listening to them. Those are words to live by. Okay, here we go.
You know, I uh, once had a barber in Kitchener, and he was uh, originally from Germany. Big surprise. Kitchener is a huge German community there. And he learned his barber as a trade, okay? Not as a weekend course at community college. And this guy was like Edward Scissorhands, I'm telling you. He was amazing. His just ch -ch 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 -ch, never stopped all day. Just mowed through your lawn like it was nobody's business. He did a haircut every three to four minutes. And the place was packed. There was like eight guys in there. We all knew we were out of here in 15 minutes. No big deal. This guy was just amazing. But his thing is, he apprenticed in Germany at a barber shop. And it was three years before he got his own chair. It was one year before he was even allowed to touch anybody's head. Just a full year of sitting there watching other guys do their job. And that was an apprenticeship. Sweeping the floors, watching what's going on. That was it. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the paint on the wall and then I'm putting some pressure right where this goes into the, the roller, okay? And I'm pushing that into that crease to get that paint deep down inside. And then I'm just back rolling to pick up the sludge marks, all right? No biggie. Making sure we don't leave lines on the wall. Well, that floor is just not very level there, is it? <laughs> All right, here we go. And this is just one coat. Already it looks so much better, eh? I can't wait to put this in the contrast with the flooring. By the way, when you're renovating, don't pick your paint color until you've picked your flooring. So important, okay? You pick your, your materials in order of the value of that purchase and how much it affects your job, right? So you're gonna to wanna to pick your flooring before your paint. You're gonna to wanna to pick your tile after your flooring. Unless your tile is the major component in your house, then you pick your tile first and you build everything else around that. You don't even pick your cabinet paints, nothing, until you've got your flooring selected and it's delivered or at least ordered. All right, don't start doing work on stuff until you've got your plan put together. The world has still got supply chain issues. You see, they might say, oh yeah, it'll be six weeks to deliver. And then five weeks later, they're like, yeah, uh, looks like we're gonna have to extend that. Some products out there, there's no intention of fulfilling an order. They just take your money like a free loan. So be careful. If you can't get your hands on it within seven to 10 days, Chances are it doesn't exist. There we go. As soon as I'm done rolling, guys, we're going to open up the phone lines. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, it's not even plugged in right now, so it's okay. Uh, I'm going to be done in just a few minutes. Why don't we start putting that phone number out now? We'll just throw it on a banner on the screen so that everybody knows where to call. All right, and if you got a renovation question, you wanna have a chat about something that's been gnawing at your mind and you're getting conflicting advice from the orange and the blue aprons out there, then feel free to give me a ring. I'll clear up the confusion for you. I think I've probably done somewhere in the range of 10 or $15 million of the renovations in my life so far. So I've seen a few things, got some life experience to share and happy to do it, all right? Remember this channel is all about seeing you guys succeed on your projects. All right, there we go. Ah, liking that, all right, there we go. And everybody's gonna be able to phone in on this one, okay? Uh, and if we all will just be respectful so that we can continue to do the open phone lines, that'll be awesome. That way, you know, we have it set up that we, 
disaster strikes in your community, we can open up the phone lines and be there to help you out. We did that with Texas a couple years ago, and that was actually uh, that was a lot of success in that. Helped a lot of people. We just haven't had the capacity to do that while we've been traveling on the road until now. So now we got the phone line back. I don't ever want to give it up again. All right. There we go. There we go. 352 Yeah, okay. Good. All right. All right, just a few more seconds, we can get to the phones here. Before I take the phone calls, it would probably be wise if I got a garbage bag. Yeah. Just because of the air conditioning in here, I want to be able to throw something down. Whew, three o'clock. Yes, I'm doing two coats. Uh, why not spray versus rolling? Ah, I could have. Right, but I got a camera working in here, and uh, um, my wife is here, and she's on our computers, and the overspray is just going to be messy with our equipment, so we just try to keep that down. Um, I'm going to do another round of caulking. There's a few little shadows from different angles that the camera can't see, so we're going to fix it, and then we're going to go from there. I got a little spot in that corner, right spot right there, spot on the bottom of that window. Boom, boom. Yeah. I even have one drip. Oh my goodness. You know, you don't take uh, any time to look over your walls. Oh, you're not going to find these things, but you know, don't feel, feel free to take a look. You know, inspect your work. Be your own <laughs> cruelest judge. There we go. Yeah, I think we go. Got the bag. Oh, that's why I taped all that down so it didn't kill my feed. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into doing something like this. Let me tell you. And that is just a little physical barrier against the air conditioning. All right. All right. Let's see. Hang on. I'm going to just change this so I can... 
see the feed while I'm on the phone. I got this set up earlier, so that'll work. Good. I'm gonna disconnect my compressor so it doesn't fire off in the middle of this. All right, now, here's my phone. Lovely, eh? <laughs> Love low tech. And we're gonna plug this in and see if we can take some calls. Boom. Um, painting isn't hard. I'm sorry, what? Close the chop saw. Ah, thank you. Yeah, okay. I can do one better than that. Is that enough? Yeah? Not a problem? All right, I got the paint lid here. All right. And it's in. Calls will be answered. Okay. Let's see how that is. Hey, Matt, why don't you give me a quick call and we'll do a test on this maybe. Matt's in Ottawa, so he can definitely give me a call. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Hello, Jeff here. Hello. Okay, that's my wife, and we're going to have a bad echo. All right, we're good. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's working. So I got a landline, right? It's plugged in. It's working. The number was on your screen. 352-901-6994. Uh, oh, hello, Jeff here. Hi, Jeff. This is Human from Kitchener, Ontario. Kitchener, Ontario. That's awesome. And what can we do to help you out, my friend? I have a 1971 uh, home yes. that has creaky floor. Of course. 1971, we didn't use any screws. So everything is nailed together. Yeah. And what kind of floors do you have? Is it a hardwood finish? It's a hardwood finish, and they have those uh, planks underneath them that go at a 45 degree angle. Yep. So like a 1 by 8 or a 1 by 10? Yes. And are they overlapped or tongue and groove or just square cut? Um, they're square cut. Okay. Right. And so you want to know how to fix that? Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to like the answer. Okay. Let's hear it. So you got two options. Um, one, you can uh, take all the hardwood up, clean out the old cleats that are in it, then screw down the subfloor, and then reinstall your hardwood. But there really is no glue it in place option because your subfloor is also squeaking. Okay? So what happens yeah, is, is between all your floor joists, every time you step there, there's upward pressure on a nail head. All right? On all of the joints and on all of the nails. And so the wood, pushing up and down during deflection is the squeak. So you have, you, have, you have wood that's attached to the floor joist with nails, and then you've got your hardwood attached to your subfloor with cleats back in 71. They didn't have staples yet. They're still using nails. And so everything is moving and deflecting. And so the longer that goes on, the worse the overall project problem gets. And the only way to fix it is to start over and screw down the subfloor, and then you can reinstall the hardwood over top of that. And by by saying that, I mean, you'd probably be better off adding another half inch of plywood before putting more hardwood down. Now, there's nothing wrong with reusing your wood. You can install it and then have someone come in and do a site finish. You can even go to the store and buy more wood to match, whether it's maple or oak, in the same thickness and the same width. And then when you do your refinishing, no one would be the wiser, right? And so you can, you can reclaim 80 to 90% of your old floor. I've done this before, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing how, how durable and how recyclable hardwood flooring is. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> All right? Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good luck with your project. Bye-bye. Right, yeah, guys, don't buy the glue. That they sell adhesives that you inject under your floor. That's fine if you've got one squeaky spot. But when you've got hundreds, like a 1971, that, that, that assembly was guaranteed to fail. 
All right, that's just the way it is. They made better floors in 1905 than they did in 1971. Anyway, that's awesome. Anybody else got a question they want to give me a phone on? Otherwise, we'll just stay in the chat for a little bit. I don't mind having a break. Mm. Heavy nicotine on the walls. Uh, yeah, no, you don't want to remove the wall paint. If you have heavy nicotine, what you want to do is you want to use a oil-based primer and you want to seal it and kill it. Okay, and not necessarily kills. In this scenario, there are even more potent paints available like cover stain, all right? It stinks. You're gonna to wanna to have a respirator. Well, we got windy here all of a sudden. You're gonna to wanna to have a respirator because it does smell, all right? And you're gonna get a little stoned if you don't have one. So consider that. Um, and you can prime the existing walls after you wash it with the TSP and it'll stain block that and get rid of that smell. And then you can paint over top. Uh, Okay, <laughs> you want to clean the wall really well. Yes, you do. You can actually contact. Um, there's a, there's a whole industry for, of, of uh, restoration professionals. Okay, so fires, floods, and after a fire, they have their, their own special paint. They'll use oil-based kills and, and they'll spray it everywhere on a fire. But on nicotine, they got a special cleaner for that as well at those stores. So feel free to do a Google search and then give them a call. All right. Well, and you know, I mean, I don't know how many people are in the in the feed right now. If anybody has any questions, um, it is Memorial Day, so if anybody out there is watching and you would like to do a um, a tribute and you want to just give a call and uh, give you a tribute call, I'm down with that. I'm from Canada, but uh, I can respect your traditions enough to at least give that opportunity. Um, that would be great. All right. Okay, so there's still a couple hundred people watching, eh? That's awesome. Hmm. Well, I'm just sitting here watching paint dry too, so we might as well have a conversation. You can feel free to call me about anything. I'm open. I, uh, I'm an open book. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm not a big fan of the paneling look either, but it is part of the tradition of mobile homes. And so why, why, why kick against the goes, eh? Here we go. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Jeff, my name's Tony. It's Tony. Yeah. Tony, buddy, how are you? I'm, I'm doing really well. You have an amazing channel. Thank you for all the work that you do. Well, I appreciate that, Tony. I, uh, it's an honor to be here, to be honest with you. We're having a lot of fun. We make a living helping people. You couldn't, couldn't ask for a better gig, eh? Yeah, right on. Uh, yeah. I'm in Wisconsin. Yep. My house was built in 1987. Mm -hmm. And uh, my chimney, I think the top concrete needs to be redone. It's quite possible. Yeah. Um, but my question is, so when I try to have a fire, so it's all mason, it's all, it's all brick. Yep. Um, I had a weird smell coming in. So obviously I stopped, called the chimney guy. He said, yeah, your flue tiles, the mortar in between is a little bit cracked. Yeah. Is that kind of call it quits, get a brand new fireplace? Or do you think products like, um, like a heat shield? that line the inside would work. If you can find somebody who wouldn't do an inspection and then give you a warranty on a heat shield, that'd be a much more cost-effective way to go about the problem. Okay. Okay. But don't let somebody install one without getting a warranty from them. Okay. Cause that is your, your red flag. That's the, that's just a cash grab. Yeah, the, the quote that I got was right around 9000 to repair and put in a gas insert. And put in a uh, gas insert, yeah. Yeah. Or you can learn so, how to do masonry. <laughs> On a roof. Yeah. That's just a weekend yeah. project, eh, Tony? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. No, I, I get that. There, but I, I'm thinking about then, you know, making sure I take care of my house and I don't have any water problems, so... Yeah, no, I tell you, it's, um, it's, it's, it's hard to find someone who will get lowered down on a rope to tuck point the inside of a chimney, all right? But yeah. they, they do do uh, chimney liners. Okay. And like I said, as long as the guy's willing to give a warranty on his work um, and you don't have any problem with your insurance company, run it by them as well. Oh, great thought. I yep. didn't even consider that. Just yeah. make sure that you're going to stay insured if that's the process you go through, all right? And, uh, okay. and they might even have you know, other requirements. So, you know, just do due diligence on that because, 
you know, the risk of fire is one thing, but it's a risk of not being covered is another. Right on. Thank you. You're welcome, Tony. Cheers, buddy. Thanks Cheers. for the call, man. There we go. I'm not a chimney sweep, but I've been around the block a few times. And, uh, you know, I won't be able to solve all your problems, but I can sure help knock a few things off the list. Here we go. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? And, uh, you know, I won't be able to solve all your problems, but I can sure help knock a few things off the list. Okay, so when, when you call, yeah, we got to kill the volume on the other end. There's a loop. All right, we're gonna give you a chance to call back. But guys, yeah, when you go to make a phone call, there is a delay. And if you're you're calling me in front of your screen, listening to the show, wow, that's what we call bad TV. All right, <laughs> so yeah, that's all right. We're all gonna learn together. This is okay. Um, what is the cock that I'm using? I'm using Alex Plus DAP for um, crown molding, and it's a, a 20 minute dry time. Hello, Jeff here. Hello, who am I speaking with? My name is Laurel. Your name is Laura? Yeah. Hi, I'm Laura. Calling from, I'm calling from Edmonton. Calling from Edmonton. Go Eskimos. Yes. So, what uh, what can I do to help you out today, Laura? I have a 1954 house. Yes. Uh, one and a half story. Okay. I had previously painted my uh, kitchen uh, cupboard. Yeah. Uh, and the, the shelves. Uh, or in the, the basis of them. Yep. Uh, because of the changes in, in uh, humidity in, in Edmonton, I've now had a number of cracks on the corners okay. of the cabinet without repainting all of them, because there's only a couple that have, have cracks on those corners. Yes. They're the, the solid uh, oak, uh, old type of cabinet. Um, what's the best way of repairing those? Without repainting? Well, without repainting the entire cabinet. Do you have the the original color that you painted? Yes. And that company still exists? Yes. And do they still make the same exact paint? Yes. Okay. So that you can get them to mix you up a quart. Mm -hmm. And then just paint that cabinet again. Is there any direct sunlight issues with that with that kitchen area? No. Did you use an enamel base paint? Uh, no, I used uh, a latex paint that was a semi gloss finish. Okay, all right. So you're, you're, that's a little older school technology, but it still works fine. I think okay. you're going to be okay if you just want to paint those two areas. Um, Would I have to fill where those cracks are? Well, that all depends on what's the source of your 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 humidity discretion. There is it is it an old house and you just have. The, the four season climate and the house is a little sensitive to that because it's not air sealed and modern construction. Yes. Okay. Then it's going to just come back. Could I use the silicone base with some flexibility? If you want to put something in the crack so that it doesn't crack again, that's paintable. Then you're yeah. going to, you want to get something like um, a, the crown mold and caulking. Actually, hang on one second. Ugh. That stores on windows. Where's the one I want? Here it is. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Here. Mac, can you I'm oh, sorry. Michelle, can you throw that on the camera for me? This is a caulking here. All right. And we get that products in Canada as well. Okay. And can you get that? Or I'll just come closer. There we go. And that type of caulking is, um, it's paintable in 20 minutes, but it also has a really good, it's like a 80 year or 50 year or whatever it is, but it has a lot of um, you know, flexibility in it. So it'll go to 400%, which is nowhere near what you're going to be facing. So if you throw a little bit of that caulking in the gap and then paint, then you should be okay for, for adjusting climates. Okay. Okay. All right. Because right. in this province, yeah, we have such a, a change in humidity over the season. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, four season climates can be brutal on wood. So right. getting that in there will, will give you that flexibility that it should eliminate that once and for all. Okay. Okay. Thank you right. very much. You're welcome, Laura. Thank you for the call. All right. Take all right. care. Okay. Bye bye. There we go. Uh, 
Oh, you're using the chat. You're sick. You don't have a voice. There's another time. We'll do this again. It's okay. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey, this is Barbie. Hi, Barbie. This is the Barbie from the chat? Yes. There you go. So I'm coming to work at your house, I see? Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do to help you out, Barbie? Well, um, okay, so it is about the paint. Um, right. Okay, so what would it work just peeling the paint like to the, like to a corner and then just, you know, using like a exacto knife and just leaving it like that and then painting over the rest or do we have to take it all off? Well, you know, this is the million dollar question, right? Like, um, how much wear and tear are you getting on your room? Oh. Right? Yeah. So that's, it all depends on the space. If it's in a hallway, you want to get it all off because there's lots of wear and tear. If it's, uh, if it's in a bedroom or something and you're not getting as much wear and tear on the walls, you can just take off the majority of it and then paint over top. The thing about it is when you paint over that kind of a surface where it's peeling underneath, mm -hmm. once you get that surface dry, it all kind of rebonds again to some extent. So if you can get a majority of that cleaned and then you prime it properly, then all the new painted area will help hold the old painted area in place as well. Oh, okay. Okay, it's not a perfect okay. fix, but it's a lot less work. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, it's, it's that in every room and it's over a 2,000 square foot home. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is a lot <laughs> of work. They don't disclose. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what you can do is you can get yourself a, um, a six inch drywall knife and use that as a scraper and get one that has flexibility. And once you get underneath that paint, um, make sure you're wearing a glove because the paint is actually going to be um, hard and it'll, it'll break off in, in, in sharp little sections. It gets under your fingernails, right? So make sure you're wearing gloves because okay. um, okay. that'll be like, you know, you know, torture. So get on behind that paint and just give good, good long swipes and peel it all off. Don't be too concerned about picky little spots that are fighting back because if it's fighting back, it's bonded. Okay. And then you can either sand that nice and flat or you can spackle around it and, and create a nice edge. Okay. Okay. All right. And then just prime it with just a, I mean, we use Sherwin Williams, so okay. exclusively. So just use that so as a primer. You just go pop in and say, hey, um, this is what's going on. You've got to confirm first that the surface on the wall is an oil. Or is the surface on the wall, was it just greasy and covered in, in cigarette stain or what? Like, why no, did they paint? Powdery. They, yeah, they redid it. And so um, they just, you know, like I said, they textured it and then they just painted over it with like hex paint. Okay. So, yeah, so here's my advice. Okay. Take, take some of that um, scraped off paint into the paint store with you. Okay? okay. And then call ahead and make sure that the manager or, or a senior staff member who knows their products are working the shift that day. And then they will give you professional advice about the condition of the walls based on that oh, sample okay. and be able to match the right primer. They have more than eight or different primers on the shelf and they're going to want to match it perfect for you. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. It's not a one solution fits all. So um, if you bring that in, they'll be able to test the, the, the back and the front and know exactly what's going on. And then do, do yourself an acetone test on the, on the wall once it's clean to, just to confirm that it's not a latex. Okay. okay, and if it wipes off with the color, with acetone, then it is a latex, and that'll be part of this problem-solving solution that they're going to have to come up with. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I got you penciled in. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Barbie. Great. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, that's 2,000 square feet of peeling paint. Oh, that's maddening. You know, generally speaking, guys, if you have a painted wall and you're painting over it, you don't have to wash. But that's if you know who was living there, right? Like I painted this front door and everything was fine, except the top corner was greasy. And that's just because there's dust and dust is greasy because things that come off human bodies are greasy. And in behind a door when it's open and the air conditioning kicks on, the, the air swirls and it left all the grease in a condensation spot in there. That sucked. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hi, Jeff. Um, my name is Karen. Uh, I'm in Seattle via Toronto. Uh, ha, ha. Very nice. <laughs> Good for you. Are you are you a permanent resident now in Seattle, Karen? Yes, actually, I finally uh, have my um, citizenship. Good for you. Good for you. It was 
long time, but um, I won't keep you long. I just uh, had a question about uh, a backsplash that we're working on in our kitchen. Okay. So we have a 1978 house out here that has heavy, heavy knockdown texture. Yes. Um, on all the walls. Right. And and uh, the um, the backsplash was laminate, and when it was removed, some of the drywall was ripped off. Some of the heavy texture is still there, and I'm not sure if I should just like sand it all or. What would you recommend um, I do to smooth out the wall so that I could install penny tile to the backsplash? Penny tile. Okay, you want smooth. Okay. Yeah, you want super smooth. So, right. is there another tile you would recommend? Where no, 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 no. That's uh, that's okay. Let's 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 do this design first because it's it's not tricky. All right. What you have is drywall with texture. So you identify where you want that penny tile to go. Okay, and you can like draw lines on the wall if you have to. And now I want okay. you to take a drywall knife or something like that or drywall saw and just cut that drywall section right out of the wall. Oh, wow. And then you go and get a new piece of drywall and you screw it back in place. Mm -hmm. All right? Cool. You install your yeah. tile, you put your edges on, and then when you're all done, you do a little caulking bead where the old meets the new, and mm -hmm. no one's going to know the difference. But it'll make your okay. tile job hours and hours faster. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. And then all of your penny Great. tiles will be flat and will be reflecting light in the same direction. Because if you put it on an un the uneven surface, you're going to get weird texture and it's going to be really noticeable from across the room. And then your, your right. grout work is going to be atrocious because you're going to have lippage on all your different tiles. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the, the okay. key there is yep. a super smooth wall. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Jeff. You're welcome. And that's a lot less mess than trying to sand all of that texture off. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Well, listen, Great. good luck with your project. Thanks for the call. Sure. All right. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Yep, you too. Well, there you go. Man, oh, man. Yeah. See, sometimes, you know, just cutting things away is easier than trying to fix it. It's just drywall. Like, it's just drywall. <sighs> anyway, my goodness. Well, there you go. We're taking calls. But number again, 352-901-6994. If you're interested and you got a question and we, we need to get an answer, then hit me up. Uh, there you go. This is a community. This is the whole point. This is a community of DIYers. People that are taking charge of their own destiny and they're not going to be stuck paying abs obscene prices for getting home repairs and remodeling. These are things that you can do yourself. You can develop these skills. You can buy a few tools. You can change your whole life. You can change your whole financial future if you want to. But I'm just saying, you don't have to be a victim of being ignored by the contractors and not getting calls back. You can just take life in your own hands, grab the bull by the horns and wrestle it down. Um, Mike wants to know how we can make his mitered corners turn out better. Well, we're using a miter saw, but it is, it's a cheaper black and decker. It's not the saw. Michael, get a good blade. I have a really cheap saw here. I think this chop saw cost me 60 bucks, but I bought a $70 blade. <laughs> okay, a good blade will make good cuts. That's all there is to it. Um, and that is the secret, okay? A good sharp finishing blade. It's about the number of teeth, okay, on the blade. Here, let me just get that information for you. I have got a 10 inch blade and my teeth count is 84, okay? 84 teeth on 10 inches. It's a lot of teeth, but it cuts really nice and clean. And that's the secret. And if your blade is just old, you can take it in and get it resharpened. That's another option, okay? Do a Google search, see who does that in your area. And uh, you can probably get it resharpened for 20 bucks, and that's a lot cheaper. And good carbide tips can be resharpened usually five to 10 times. All right, so there you go. That's an option too. Whew, all right, nice. Yes, there you are, it is. What's with the arm thing? What does that mean? Is that flex? What is that? No, it's just like, like from Khaleesi. What does that mean? No, no, no that's not, that's Italian. That's, that's, that's different. <laughs> ah. Hello, is Jeff here. Who's on the phone? Hey, this is Ken. It's Ken or yeah, Kim? K-I-N. K-I-N. All right. It's K-I-M. Like, M as in? Yeah, just Kimberly, really. Kimberly. Well, see, now that makes it so much easier. Okay, Kim. 
Ah, oh, sorry about that. My goodness. I think the paint's going to my brain. What can I do to help you out? and it looks like the previous owners have gone over all of the outlets and switches and painted them. Yes. Uh, and now I'm in, yeah, and now I'm in the middle of trying to go and replace all of those. And of course, they also managed to use like the largest place possible. So it looks like there's now this crevice um, around where the previous plate was. And of course, like it, it dips down to where like the drywall is sitting. Yeah. How would you go ahead and like make that surface smooth again? Well, there's two options. <laughs> you can make the surface smooth, or you can use king size plates when you change your plug. Okay. There are three sizes of electrical plate on the market. Okay. So there's a standard, there's a medium, and then there's a king size. Now you got to pay for that. Um, they're usually about a buck and a half or two bucks a piece, but. Um, Unless they've got that paint match around, you're not just sanding it smooth, you're repainting the entire house, right? Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. So if you're planning... Yeah, actually, it, it, I, I it, jumped around in your chat that I was going to go and uh, go paint my dining room at the same time as you. Like, that's pretty much what I've been doing right now. Okay. Actually. So if you're going to paint the whole house, then spending money on big plates probably isn't all that necessary. Unless... You, there's a few rooms that you say, hey, I could leave that alone if I don't have to paint around those stupid switches. So you could just buy the king size switches for those rooms. Um, as far as uh, when you've got a finished paint, it's got acrylic and it actually doesn't sand very well. Okay. Unless you have an orbital sander and you can really sand it right back down to the wall. The best way to fix that is to grab some spackling and a drywall knife and just spackle the area and then sand that smooth, prime it, and then paint the wall. It's easier to fill that gap from the plug to the new ridge paint line than it is to sand the old paint back. Gotcha. Okay. okay. There you go. Thank you. That helps a lot. And a dry dex product like that, a thin little application, probably dry in an hour or two. You can heat it up a little bit with a hair dryer about a foot away and put a, some heat on it. Okay. And it all depends on how much of a hurry you're in, you know, but that'll work. Dry decks on one of them doing exactly that, so I'll just get my hair dryer. Thank you. You're welcome, Kim. Such a huge help. Have a, have a great day. You too. Bye. Okay, bye bye. There we go. We saved another person from wasted time. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, hi from MT. That's Montana, I believe, right? Or is that MO? I'm not sure. MT Montreal? Do we need to prime sheetrock before we texture the walls? Always. Every product on the market says to prime your walls before stipple, before texture, before knockdown, before anything. No one does it, which makes the removal process so damn difficult. But yes, you should prime first. What is going on over here, Giggles? Huh? You're, you're reading some of these comments that I'm missing? Uh, Oh, here we go. Uh, Lindy, I need to get a steel tub out of a small space by myself. Can I use my reciprocating saw for a steel tub? Yes, you can, but make sure you go buy the metal blade for reciprocator tubs and do yourself a favor and get a short one, okay? Um, cut out a section that's not on a wall where you expect to have any power and get a flashlight and a camera shot maybe and just confirm there's nothing in behind the tub, as far as electrical, that's just dangling around. Sometimes electricians are lazy. They know there's a tub or the tub is installed already and then they'll just fish a wire around the tub without going through the studs. All right, and it is Montana. Okay, there we go. Thanks, Deb. Oh, that's awesome. The smile Jeff gets when he helps people. Yeah, I tell you, it's addicting. I love taking calls. I could do this all day. This, I like, I'm, I'm feed off this energy. It's so awesome. Here we go. Very cool, okay. Well, if anybody else wants to make a call, if you're just joining, we're taking live calls today, 352-901-6994. Charges may apply depending on where on the planet you are at. And uh, it is 3.37. We're going to just do this for about another 20 minutes, and then we're going to call it a day, guys. It's been fun hanging out. So uh, this is your last chance to get in on this. Here we go. I don't know. Um, should I spray wood siding or roll out paint? Listen, if you're not doing a live show with computers and the camera equipment and lighting equipment, then use a sprayer. 
I'm brushing rolling because not everybody has a sprayer and this will empower more people to realize that they can make their old house look really good, really easy. And so um, Mary Bell says she's too shy to call. Oh, that's all right. You don't have to. It's just an option. All right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> mm. Well, listen, if nobody's going to call, I'm going to get back and do my cocking. Uh, got some repairs to do, and then I'm going to hit this wall a second time before I go home. There we go. All right. There we are. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, honey, I can't paint the wall. I have a phone call. Hello, it's Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hi, Jeff. This is Brandon from Oxford, Maine. Uh, love listening to your show and uh, watching your channel. Brandon, that is so cool. Thanks, buddy. What can I do to help you out? Uh, well, I have a, a home that kind of has like a daylight basement. And sometimes when I have a lot of rain, uh, there's a little hydrostatic pressure that yep. comes up. Yep. And I was wondering your thoughts on installing like tile or the vinyl flooring with a little bit of hydrostatic pressure once in a while. Now, are we talking hydrostatic pressure on, on underneath on your floor or at the foundation where the um, the cold pour of the wall is on the on the footing? Uh, a little bit of both. Oh, really? Okay. Do you have a sump pump? Uh, I do not have a sump pump. Well, that'll solve the hydrostatic pressure from underneath. Okay. So if you put in a sump pump, you can eliminate the pressure on your on your floor from underneath. And that'll be really important because you can install tile on a concrete floor um, with hydrostatic pressure underneath the floor because it's constantly trying to lift and buckle and crack. Uh, what about on the walls? Um, is there any way to fix that without digging up around the foundation? Um, yeah, there is an interior waterproofing system. You're going to cut out your, your concrete uh, about a foot from the wall. All right. And then they're going to do a little channel. They'll stick in a, a French drain. And usually that connects to a sump pump or your lateral if you have if you're on city sewer. And then then they can put in a membrane that goes from that up the wall. And then that isolates the interior of the building from all that moisture and it goes straight to a drain. And, and that moisture is not available to enter into the home. And so that is an option. It runs about the same price as digging around the house. The other option is to put a French drain on the outside of your house. Um, do you have an option to like increase your, 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 your slope away from the building? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, um, I'm kind of on a, the side of a hill. Okay, so what you can do is, and I understand, I mean, you're, when you get rain, you get rain, right? Like you get some serious storms coming up the coast. So those events are, are no joke, but if you had, uh, if you dug just to like a foot of dirt at the, at the foundation of the house, okay, and you did that same weeping tile, it's like a plastic tube with holes covered in a sock, and you laid that on a foundation of geotextile and covered it in clean stone, all right, then all that rain that ends up pushed up against the house would be collected and then removed through that tile, and it wouldn't build up down the side of the wall, and that would eliminate the hydrostatic pressure at the wall in your basement. And that is a really easy DIY project because you're only dealing with the topsoil. Uh, you're saying it, it would only have to be like a foot into the soil? Not even because the, the, the weeping tile is usually a four inch pipe. So you, you dig five inches down, you put geotextile in, right? You can, uh, you can even attach that geotextile right to the house with a, um, an adhesive bead. Put, lay in your, your, your drainage tube and then cover it in clean stone and then decorative river rock, right? You can make it kind of like an intentional rock garden around the house. And uh, you're, you're in business. And that four-inch pipe, that can move 
Uh, probably somewhere around uh, 100 gallons a minute. So that's, 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 a, that's a whole lot of work. And that removes all that water from going down the foundation wall. And remember, when that water's stacked on your foundation wall, it's 50 pounds of pressure per, per, per inch. And, you know, you get four feet in there. Now, that's no wonder water's coming in the house, right? Uh -huh. And then once you've mitigated that, then you can take a look at, okay, so now we've, we've conquered the water issue. Then we can take a look at how to, you know, uh, cost-effectively finish renovating the house. So putting down a simple subfloor system with a, with a vinyl plank might be a great solution. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a solution. Well, you could do the whole basement and the French tile for the cost it's going to take you to, to hire a company to waterproof your house. Right? So... You, you, there's no way. I mean, you could renovate your whole basement plus your French tile. You could, you, you, and and you'd, you'd probably only run yourself eight or ten thousand materials, including a new big screen TV. <laughs> and and you know you're gonna get a foundation company out there. I bet the quotes coming in right now are starting at twenty to twenty five. Yeah, I haven't uh, got any quotes on it, but I'm sure it's uh, quite expensive. Yeah, well, between the shortage of labor and they have proprietary technology and products, yeah, there's uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. So if you're if you're thinking of doing a DIY, um, do the French drain, get through a storm, and then confirm that your water's under control. Um, and if that's if that if you're on a hill, then you shouldn't have water underneath your slab if you're keeping it away from the house. Now, how, how old is your home again? Uh, built in 1989. 89. Okay, so then you already have a modern weeping tile system. It's not like you're going to have a collapsed clay degraded system, so you don't have to worry about that. Do you have any big trees in your yard close to the house? Uh, but, yeah, a ton, of, a ton of pine trees. Okay, so then the other thing you want to do is you want to get a plumber out there to do a camera inspection on your line. You might have to uh, blast out some roots, okay, on the lateral. Because if it's full of roots, it'll, it'll reduce the speed at which the, 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 your house weeping tile system can remove the water. So if you had any other problems with, with your plumbing, with flushing of toilets or, 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 or anything like that? Um, I, I don't think the roots uh, have gone um, to where the plumbing pipes are. Okay. Yet. All right. Just, just another thought. You know, while we're thinking about it, you don't want to do, um, you know, uh, three out of four if, if the fourth is already an issue. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and keep that in the back of your head. If you start to have a toilet backup and issues and stuff, it won't be a result of what you're done. It's just a, it's another potential issue that you could see down the road. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for the call. I hope that helps you out. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. That, that helps a lot. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Thanks. Enjoy Maine, man. Talk to you later. Appreciate it. All right. Bye. Thanks. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's a real common thing, guys. There's a lot of people out there that you just have not dealt with moving the water away from the building. And the rule is this. If, you're, if your ground is four feet from that cold joint where your footing and your, your wall is poured, that's a cold joint. Water can be forced under there. If it's four feet down, you got to move four feet away, okay? Hello, Jeff here. Who am I talking to? Hey, my name's Jim. Hey, Jim. I'm taking a call. Hey, I'm, like, I'm just sitting here hanging out like you, so like <laughs> this is cool. What can I do to help, bud? Well, I'm actually debating about doing a project, and I was just kind of wondering what your opinion of adding a French door to, I guess, a living room. Um, I think that the space currently there is a little bit big, so I'd have to like probably add some sort of blocking or something. Sure. Um, but... I don't know. It's, it's one of those things of going like, do I really want to add a door? Do I want to leave it sort of an open sort of thing? Well, you know, the trend right now is for open concept. But if you want a door because you need to have that extra privacy or you just, you know, like, then adding a door is not a, not a tricky thing. Like, it's not a structural element. So you can always remove it again if you ever want to. Yeah. Well, I was, I was looking online at your video that you posted like four years ago. Right. Um, about it. And, you know, I've, I've never done a, a single door before. So would, would I, that be a project that is something that uh, a, a pretty beginner DIYer could do? Okay. Well, you know, there's, there's one step faster than what I showed you with, with that's easier. 
and that is you can go to a a, a door shop or at a, or a trill sh trim shop or a, what 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 city are you living in? Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia will have uh, at least three, maybe four specialty millwork shops. Okay, just Google them, see which one's near you, and you can order up a French door, custom made, to either fit the space or they can you can order up a, a french door system that comes already hinged on the jam all right so all you have to do is then install the door already built and assembled and they'll okay. have they'll have the the holes that drilled out that that, that becomes a real beginner you know diy issue then all you got to do is just worry about level and flush and using shims to do the install oh okay right make sure the doors open and close properly and that's all you've got to con be concerned about and, you, and it reduces the whole work scope of work for you. Okay. Okay. And you know, you're going to pay okay. an extra hundred bucks or something to have them hang the door in advance for you. But you know what, if you're not confident, you don't want to pull the trigger. Um, that's maybe an expense that you can justify. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Well, you're welcome, buddy. Happy to help. Cheers, man. There we go. So yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm just saying there's options out there. I mean, uh, if you're design function, if you're design over function oriented, you're going to pay more for the project. If you're willing to really dig down and go right back to the basics, you can cut down your own tree. You can mill your own lumber if you want to. Somewhere between there and what I just described to him, you, you get to fit your holes based on your budget and your time and, and what kind of experience you're looking to get out of it. Uh, have I ever seen anyone tile around a shower insert? Um, yeah, I have. It's not necessary. Most cases, they'll just use a piece of trim and then they'll cock it up. Once you get above the shower arm, the only thing you have to deal with is steam. And if you have a bathroom fan, you don't have to deal with steam. <laughs> so don't worry about it. You're not, you're not doing anything to pres preserve or prevent any bad things from happening by worrying about what happens above the shower arm. Uh, here we go. Whoo, have a shy. I had paint stuck on a tile trim in the bathroom. When I tried getting it off the tile, it left a thick layer of paint, which is uneven for some of the wall right above the tile. What should I do? Uh, paint stuck on a tile trim. Okay. Okay, so if you've got paint on tile trim, which is usually either plastic or anodized aluminum or chrome, you want to use acetone to remove the paint. It paint's going to be acrylic. And that stuff is almost bulletproof, right? So the only way to get it off, and you can, you can ask the ladies because they use it to get rid of that paint off their nails, and it works. Hello, Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hello there. My name is Lisa Houston. I'm calling from Michigan. Lisa, you just sound like such a delight. What can I do to help you out? Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. You have been the person I've been watching. I bought a, a house for $2,000 from the land bank in Detroit. Right. And, of course, I have some issues with it. One of them being that I have a wooden window, of, I mean a full-size window, in the shower, well, where the bathtub and shower, because they're both together. Yes. And I'm wondering, how will I frame... Um, putting a new window in, but how do I frame that out? Because wood wouldn't do well with water, would it? No, ma'am. That is, uh, they're mortal enemies. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Like, I mean, in that situation, you're really relying on caulking and you're painting, right? But okay. you, you guys get four season climate up there. So all okay. that expansion and contraction is going to open up access to water sooner or later. Right? So. Okay. Um, if you use, uh, if you want to replace the window, you put in vinyl, problem solved, right? Okay, okay, that's what I'm replacing so, it with. So that's with an vinyl. option. So you put in vinyl, and then what you want to do is you want to put a cement board as the window jam, not wood. The jam extension, you want to put in cement board, half-inch cement board. And if you're buying a new window, you can actually get um, a drywall return, it's called, okay? All right. And what it is, it's like a U channel on the inside of your window that you would stick a half inch drywall into. Okay. Okay. So what you do is you order the U you order the drywall return on your vinyl window and you stick your cement board in there instead. It comes half inch. 
and it fits a little easier because it's like a 30 second skinnier. Okay. And you stick the cement board in and then you can actually use um, some mesh tape and thin set and red guard. Okay. okay. And you can actually waterproof the window jam right up to the window. Okay. All right. All right. And then by doing that, you will make sure that you seal out the water from ever getting behind the jam and into the framing of the wall. Okay. All right. Smart. Tell your wife she is beautiful. You have a beautiful family. Thank you and very you are much. Just an absolute, absolute sweetheart. You have been the person that's maybe able to tell people to come work for me. Like, no, 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 that's not right. I watched. I watched. <laughs> you keep their feet to the fire. That's awesome. All right. Thank you, sweetie. Have a great holiday. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to help you. Cheers. Oh, that is awesome. Look at that. Look at that. I got I got a big fan in Michigan, honey. Yep. There you go. That is awesome. Whoo. Okay. How are we doing here? Six minutes left. Oh my goodness, and I'm going to cut it off because I got to eat. I tell you, I only had, what, five bites of lunch, but I got my work done. I'm going to have to hit one more coat of paint before I go for dinner. All right. Hey, it's Jeff here. Who am I speaking with? Hey, this is Jeff from Wisconsin. Jeff from Wisconsin. Jeff squared. That's cool. What can we do? This is a second call from Wisconsin today. Look at that. There you go. What can I do to help you out, bud? Yeah, I, I have a area where I don't have any stairs going to my second floor. Okay. And um, I was wondering what my options are and what the best solution would be uh, to put a staircase in. And uh, I have about seven feet that goes to the wall. And then I could go in another direction um like 15 feet but would a tr traditional staircase still work or would i have to use something different well the good news is is we've got a lot of options when it comes to staircases nowadays they don't necessarily have to be enclosed with a wall on either side um you know and they don't generally speaking have to be attached to structural members at the top and bottom. You can even attach staircases now off of a wall. So it all depends, are, are, you are you looking for a design option or are you looking for a budget option? Like what kind of direction are you heading? Uh, well, it's gonna give me an additional 400 square feet on my house. If you can get so a staircase wanna, up there, yeah. I wanna get the most value out of the staircase that would increase the price of my house. Okay, well, um, without knowing the value of your home, how many square feet is your house right now? Uh, right now it's about 1,600. Okay, so you're looking at, at being somewhat reasonable with this, right? So you could actually contact um, a stair company and they could, you know, they could drop in a builder's stair for you that you could have a, a carpet run on it. You can contact, uh, uh, there's, there, there should be a stair company in your city that actually does nothing but make staircases. And they can give you price options on different building materials. Um, really what they do is they would actually come out and measure it and then they would build it in their shop and they would just deliver it one day and then drop it in place and attach it. And that's something that you can contract out. Okay, now, so, so would that be something that uh, I probably wouldn't want to DIY or? You know, it all depends on your level of comfort with, with doing the math, but stairs are a tricky carpentry skill to begin with. Um, if you wanted to do some DIY, you could ha order up builder stairs, and then you could finish off by installing your own stair treads and doing a paint and stain version, right? So then you can get a, like a nice dark stain on a, on a maple with a, with a white riser. So you can kind of take that project and go half and half. Okay. That way the stairs are are designed to fit perfectly because you do have building code issues there as well. Every step has to be exactly the same rise and run. And so there's not a lot of mercy there from building officers or inspectors. If you ever go to sell the house, and if you're concerned about value of your home, making sure it looks professional right out of the gate is a consideration. Okay. All right. All right thank you. Okay, buddy. Good luck, man. All right. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Wow. 
Interesting. Adding 400 square feet. He must have a story and a half. He wants to go upstairs. All right. Well, there you go, guys. That's four o'clock. Uh, boom. Look who's in charge of the phone. All right. There we go. Loving us. Let's just jump into the chat here and we can all say goodbye. Um, had a great time today. I'm thinking I want to do this again. All right. Do me a favor. If you think this was fun and you like this idea, hit the share button and send it to other people that you know that are renovating or in your DIY community, okay, or your friends, and send a signal to YouTube that this is something that you guys would like to have done and that maybe, just maybe, they should be suggesting this content. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Join us on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. We got Paul from Studpack going to join us live for an hour. We're going to have a conversation about renovations, okay? Uh, both of us have been in the industry. We're about the same age, but we come from different geographies, so there are things that we can both learn from each other. And I think he's had different life experiences. I know right now he's currently building a house from scratch with his son on his channel here on YouTube. And that's quite a wild ride. They're finally out of the mud, which is great, and probably getting into framing soon. So there's a lot to learn from. Ha! Ah, this is awesome, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Um, don't forget to check out our video that came out yesterday. It's all about the outside of this building. I had to peel off the siding and install house wrap and then reinstall all my siding again because I just couldn't put those windows in and walk away without knowing it was waterproof. And sometimes integrity means it's gonna cost you money. And we fixed it. So cheers. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.